going live in three, two, and we're live. Hello. Hi. Hi. Good afternoon. Nice to see you. Where have you come from? <laughs> I, I appeared from from that door. Yeah, I've been I've been strapped in the back room for like a week. You never actually go home. You just walk into the back room and never emerge for a week. You yeah. just nest. Yeah, nest. Oh, that's such a term, isn't it? I need to move that camera down slightly so I can see the chat. Hello, everyone. How are we doing? Uh, sorry to be a little bit late. We were talking. We we were we've been on schedule all afternoon. We've been fiddling with things, and then suddenly you're just like, oh, it's forty seven minutes. We need to hit go live right now. Yes. We should we should have done the thing. Yeah, told you copy in Graham's hand. You you shush, you shush. <laughs> anyway, thank you very much. Uh, hello everyone, how are you all doing? Anyone's uh, oh anyone installed Windows eleven? I want to talk to someone who has installed Windows eleven or some people because there's a couple of people who've been doing it. Because I, I tell you, here's my first hot take of the day. I don't care about the Windows eleven leak. Everyone's making videos about it, and I'm like. I want to wait for the Microsoft announcement because they're probably going to announce an official public beta and that's the one that I want to look at. Yeah, basically. Have, have you looked at it yet? No. Yeah. Have you looked at any videos of it no. yet? Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. See, yeah. I, I am not engaging with this content. Yeah. Basically, because I'm like, I, I just don't actually particularly care. Yeah, you're in exactly the same disposition as me. Not... We, we, we didn't prep this, by the way. This is the first time we brought it up. I you're... care about the new version of Windows, the next build of Windows. Yes. And all of that. But I care from an official announcement point of view. Yes. I that... don't care from a yeah. point of view of getting involved in leaks. Yeah. Not because I have any moral objections to it, but at the moment we have no evidence that the app, that when Microsoft actually do an announcement and a, a release an actual public beta, that might be completely different to the yeah. leak. I think... So that... all of this fuss over the leak, when the actual official beta comes out, it might be night and day different. So everyone's going to, oh, this is what it's going to look like. It's like, you don't know that. Yeah. It might I, be, we have got no evidence that this is what it's going to be like. Yeah. I think my concern with everyone sort of going off of everything in this leaked build and so on, mm. is the fact that the leak build just looks and feels like it runs like um, 10x. Mm. Because I I ran I played around with 10x the develop development preview yeah. for that, um because it was introducing interesting ways of doing dual screen and things like that and I was like yeah. oh Microsoft actually hammering dual screen functionality I'm like yes I like this idea yeah. even if it's designed for more of a mobile device mm. it's still a case of interesting ideas for the the general desktop as well so I was playing around with that for that and it feels like it's basically the same. Mm. And it's just like... So um, it's entirely possible that this leak is j literally just a reskinned Windows 10X then. Um, which might be what Windows 11 of, is. Kind of, we, yeah. Know. But it's, it's just kind of a case where I'm just like... It feels like more would have happened in the time since 10X was cancelled. Mm. If that's what was actually going to happen, kind of thing. I don't know. Or it just feels like, why would you bother cancelling 10X if you're going to release literally 10X, but by a different name? But then why do you announce you cancelled it and not just change the name kind of yeah. thing? It's lots of things just, I'm sure they could, ha could happen and can happen, but it just seems a bit weird in my head. Yeah. Which one of these ISOs do I want? Depends. I, I, grab, I grabbed two just because they were, they were different. Okay. And I don't know if there were no listed differences between the two. Yeah, I'll start with that one because it's not a 7-zip within a 7-zip. Seven zips within seven zips await you, Riku. Yeah. Uh, is that an ISO? I think that's an ISO. Just to add context. Yeah, there we go. Uh, we, we, we've got stuff and things coming up. Um, yes. Is that the password? Yes. yes. Okay. No, no, it's the usual one. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm opening a seven zip archive and it came up with a password. <laughs> Karen just said, yes. I'm... <laughs> anyway... <laughs> Um, it looked more like you were asking a question of, is it the usual one? That's not what I was going to ask. However, I do know the usual one, of course. So, yeah. Uh, right. That was the face. Anyway, I feel yeah. like we should cover the thing that we said we were going to cover th first before we started on anything. Yeah, let's let's tell people what we're going to do today, and then yes. we'll pick up the chat again um, and start talking about other stuff. But, yeah, so that, that that's the thing, is that, uh, I mean, when Microsoft do the, the keynote for Windows 11... I'm going to be, and if they announce a public beta, 
I'll be super interested in taking a look at that. But I kind of don't care about the leak just because we have no idea what that actually is, basically. Mm -hmm. that That's the reason. That's that's the thing there. There's so many people like people saying sort of, oh, here's how you cuss, here's how you put it back to the original start menu. And here's what gaming is like on it and stuff like that. And it's just like Microsoft could announce a completely different system yeah, next absolutely. week. It might be completely different. Yeah. And then you guys are all going to look like idiots. I guess, you know. I, um, I, but then on the other hand as well, part of me, part of it is just bandwagoning, and you know when something and gets popular, good views. yeah. So that's it. You know when something gets popular and you don't want to look at it because it's popular, and that's a really stupid reason not to look at it. For that exact reason, I hated Snap Rhythm as a dancer. Yeah. <laughs> that song, I hated it with a passion. <laughs> Because it was popular and got yeah. played and got played a lot. Yeah. And I was just And it's like, a really dumb reason to dislike yeah. something. And it was think, it genuinely every yeah. time it came on, every time I started hearing it, I was just like, nope, off. Yeah. Off. But Stop. I, I think all of us have got something that we don't like just because it's popular. Yeah. I think everyone can yeah. So yeah. Mm. Uh, right. Anyway, so plans for today. The 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 build from last week is sitting here. Um, so just a bit of a follow-up on this. I've been tinkering with this um, yesterday and today. I, man we, I managed to get drivers installed on this. We haven't got ACPS. So, uh, yeah, I keep looking into the wrong place. Um, we haven't got ACPI still. However, it seems to be working just fine without it. But we've got pretty much drivers for everything else. And I got 3D Mark 2001 SE running on that, which is awesome. Um, so uh, as far as I'm concerned, this is op success. So um, in a minute, we'll. I, I want to move some fans around just to finish the job on this, just to fill up some holes and make it look nice. And then um, uh, what we what we want to do today is um, just to start off with is we're just going to start that up, show that just so you guys can just see how that came out after last week was a. We ended on a bit of a downer with a. Okay, we got to the desktop, but man, this was a lot harder than we thought it was going to be. Mm. Um, and then the other thing we've got, Caradog has been scraping around and he's found a 2016. XP ISO, which has got apparently lots of tweaks and stuff to yeah. it. Yeah, it's, it's very and much one of those ISOs from those places where people make custom versions of Windows because security or because theming. So I'm mm. expecting it to be horrific, but also at the same time, they do slipstream in lots of the updates and driver packages and things like that. So it's kind of a case of just um, maybe it's got something oh, this, in there that makes it easier. This needs a DVD. Oh, that's a bad sign straight away. An XP, an XP ISO that needs a DVD. Well, yeah, it, because it might be seven hundred and one megabytes of themes. <laughs> but well, I mean, sure, you've got to have your anime waifu somewhere. They might as well be on your XP desktop in four K. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Remember the OS tans. When they made anime waifus of all the Windows versions. Okay. No. I am completely oblivious to this. XP had big boobs because for the time XP needed lots of RAM and that was supposed to be symbolic of XP wanting lots of memory. Ah, uh, remember when people said, oh yes, using 128 megabytes of RAM is a lot of RAM for an <laughs> OS. Mm. Oh god, a lot has changed in 21 years. <laughs> the old bad gamer. Cotton Eye Joe was banned in your room. <laughs> I agree. I hated that song, not because it was popular, just because I didn't like it. So, interesting little factoid. Cotton Eye Joe. It's a euphemism for an STI. Oof. So yes, banning an STI from your room is a good idea. There is no disc in your disc. Oh, apparently this archaic DVD RW doesn't work. Oh, unless I've got a horrible feeling this burner isn't an RW. No, it should still be able to write to an R to an RW disc, though, right? Unless it's like horrifically old. Well, yes. Yep. Yeah, don't forget that's that's a plus. Oh no, this and isn't is a plus. A my, this might. I, yeah, this is might. That, it's not minus. It's a dash. Okay. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I fully. Yep. Yeah. I'm, I'm not touching that with a barge ball. <laughs> I'm upset. I'm upset. Here's my barge pole. Here's me not touching that with a barge pole. 
Uh, it's fine. I've got, I've got that, which does have literally everything under the sun. Yes. What are we going to connect that up to, though? Are we going to try and burn an ISO from XP? That's a terrible idea. Oh, I like my CD wallet at home. Because I had Nero. What you, oh, were you going to try and install Nero and then burn the CD in it? Yes! Just for, like... just for more unnecessary pain. Yeah, or you could use that machine behind you. Yeah, that's, um, yeah I think that's what we'll do. So, <laughs> uh, um, I'll, uh, I'll start setting up the Lian Lee, I guess. Do you want to have a look through the chat and see what's going on in chat while I, Absolutely. While I sort this mess out? Uh... Uh... Yes. Yes, there was a thing. The root certificate for XP expired at some point reasonably recently and there was effectively no way of updating it without a whole bunch of faff so then every SSL cert afterwards just wouldn't work so it's just like ah yes that is a problem if you're attempting to try and use XP I did start up um <clears throat> I did start up Internet Explorer maybe five on this earlier on today. It was just like, ah, oh, yes. Nothing. I, I got the Google homepage. Oh, really? Google homepage loaded. That's not um, bad. That's, yeah, that's better than I expected. Yeah, but nothing else would... Because I, I, yeah. I tried to go... And, I tried to download Firefox um, thinking that would be my best bet. But the Firefox yeah. website just noted out. I think it's just because I couldn't... I, I couldn't HTTPS. Yeah. Um, It didn't know... It couldn't SSL anything. Yeah. And obviously, like, it's actually... Oh, no. It's actually, quite, the problem will be that... IE5 doesn't support um, T TLS, TSL? Which way around do we TLS. TLS. Yeah. yeah. And everything is on TLS. Ah, isn't yeah, it? that'll be it. And IE5 yeah. doesn't support that. It only supports SSL3, mm. I think. Suffice to say, it was horribly broken. Yeah, but from memory, I'm like, I, I can't specifically remember, but yeah. it certainly doesn't support anything remotely close to modern or current or useful or helpful. <laughs> Yes. But anyway, we, we started saying what the plan was, and then we kind of stopped. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, the yeah. Plan, the plan is to show what this is doing, how it's doing its stuff and things. Yeah. And, uh, and also... 3D Mark. Yeah, have a look at have a look at this weird 64-bit ISO, yeah. just to see if that's actually any better than what we were doing last week. So yeah. if someone is actually looking at what we're messing around with here, going, I can't, I've been kind of wanting to do this myself, um, it's a case of, are these weird modified ISOs actually useful in any way mm. or is it just the same as what we had just with a bunch of bollocks attached to it that yeah, no one basically. cares about um so yeah because if we install this and it just clean installs with a cpi and 64 bit yeah. and we can find drivers that's okay so yeah. awesome 64 bit windows xp yes please yeah exactly um, certainly is a case of obviously it'll give you four gigs of ram plus vram on yeah. top of that kind of thing mm. as opposed to being like ah yes that's right have Three Whereas, around to be three honest, minutes. if we if we burn this up, if we load this up and we blue screen and set up, I'm almost immediately inclined to give up straight away. I would say we should try both of the ISOs. Mm. If if the first one we do blue yeah. screens, try the other one, see yeah. if it does exactly the same thing, and then give up. Yeah, sure. that, that is that is yeah my yeah first fail on each ISO kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> basically. And then after that, we've got some other bits and pieces to fiddle with. Um, I've got a mouse that needs a new cable attached to it, and also. Uh, Carol brought in. Uh, tell him about the keyboard and tell about the plans that yes, we were absolutely. knocking on there. Uh, I brought in my keyboard. It is a code keyboard made by WAST or WASD keyboards, and uh, it is my main keyboard. And basically, it's a case of what we're planning on doing is replacing the annoying micro USB on the back, which I can't actually get a decent shot of. Hold on, let me go way into the camera. There we go, that, replacing that with a USB-C one. We're not necessarily, well, we're definitely not doing we're the not actual doing replacement today. today, but we're certainly scoping it out, seeing what's possible, what modifications and so on will need to be done to it to make it fit. And also double checking the caps lock key, uh, caps lock LED, because I have two of these keyboards, one at home, one in the office, and the caps lock light on both keyboards has randomly failed uh, or appears to have failed. And it's just slightly suspicious to me that two LEDs on two different keyboards have failed when LEDs kind of run forever. But the other two for scroll lock and num lock work absolutely fine. So who knows? Yeah. We might find something there. 
Oh, yeah. Life. And then um, the mouse where the cables come out the top of it. So I guess it's technically a hamster. <laughs> sure, yeah. <laughs> that, that, that took you a moment. I don't think you were particularly paying attention. No. <laughs> There's a joke in there somewhere, I'm sure. Yes, absolutely. Right, I'm, I'm busy making a hash up of this. We don't, I don't have an accessible SATA power cable. So, no. so you're now jerry-rigging in another power supply to give you a SATA power cable so you can then power a DVD drive. Well, a Blu-ray drive. Blue, yeah. Blue way. Did I? <laughs> oh dear. But yes. I need to tidy up these desks. I hate everything that's happening here right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. That is something. I'm I'm in yes. cable hell right now. With the thing wongers. Right. Absolutely. T t tidy one thing at a time. Sounds like we're giving ADHD advice. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. More common than people think. What, giving advice or ADHD? ADHD. Oh, okay. I didn't know where we were going with that, but yes, <laughs> I, I agree on all fronts. Uh. Mm. Right. Okay. That is there. I now just need yes. something to rest that on. Rest no, on. no, we were, we were, we we were not prepared. Indeed. Hack tack. The well, fact that you expect better. I I. Uh, I wasn't expecting these ISOs to be more than uh, to be bigger than a CD. We had True. we had we I've got CD burning stuff set up here, and we've got a stack of black CDs. And then suddenly it was just like, oh, these ISOs need a DVD. That I was not prepared for. Uh, right again. Yes, uh, Graham, have Hello. you had any experience trying to RMA a Western Digital Drive at all? Reason I ask is any contact info I find to get hold of WD in the UK doesn't work. Emails are postmastered, or me. I, I I don't work for WD. I'm not a contact method for them. <laughs> I I claim no affiliation. <laughs> um, I haven't no, but I mean, if I were RMAing something, I would be going through the online forms. I wouldn't be trying to contact anyone. I'd just be going to the. I just Google search WD RMA, um, and fill uh, like and just. Yeah, fill out, fill out the form on their website, surely. Yeah, mm. or I guess, well, or going back to the point of sale. Oh, point so, of sale, so yes. So where you actually yeah. bought the... Yeah, yeah, that's another good point. Um, have you tried contacting the store from which you purchased it? Because they will, at the very least, hopefully have an actual functioning contact method for them. Yeah. To then go through that method. Yeah, potentially. Uh, right, yes, I shall take that. Knowing my luck, I don't have 7-zip on this rig. Uh, bam. Bam. What happened to that DVD? It's there. <laughs> yep. Where are you, DVD? I don't have 7-zip on this thing. <laughs> oh my god. There's nothing on that computer, so oh I haven't done god. anything with it yet. I'm slow. I mean, I'm slowly building it up, but it was a case of that computer wasn't supposed to be a utility computer per se. It was supposed to be just for running benchmarks. But you just kind of end up installing utilities on every, any computer you've got, just so you can walk up to any one of your computers and do what you need to do. Yeah, basically. Hmm. Um, PC Wall are not interested. They say contact WD Direct. Surely being a retail store, they have a responsibility to provide. I mean, how, what, I... what, what, what yeah. uh, how old is this drive? Um, cause if it's, if, if it's less than a year old, then surely, um, PC world have a legal responsibility to uphold the warrant. As far as I'm aware. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But also a case, um, the other thing to do is. The, the usual method of escalation I have is finding what the CEO's address is and posting them a letter that says, I am very displeased with the lack of service I have received from your staff. Mm. Please, may I have a response within seven days of this letter and then send that via recorded delivery. <laughs> Obviously, detailing the actual useful information in the letter as well. Just don't send a blank letter with no contact information. Yeah. <laughs> that doesn't help. <laughs> but like, you know, that. Um, because yes, had a problem with O2 years and years ago, um, where they were trying to charge me something like seven or eight hundred pound a month for mobile data usage. Hmm. This was back when 2G was the only method of data. 
they were trying to charge me for downloading something like 90 gigs of data a month through 2G. That would be quite a trick. And yeah. I was just like, uh, what? No. no. Not only is that a no, that's also a, I'm pretty certain that's not possible. So, mm. yes, um, after faffing around a bit and some letters to the CEO, it got resolved. And funny enough, a large credit was applied to the bill that nullified the extraneous charges. Hey. So, yes. So, yeah, I've no idea what the theoretical maximum download through 2G is, but... Yeah. All right. We need to do some adjustments. It's occurred to me that if we want to do any kind of capture from this, we need to adjust setup again. Yeah. Uh, it, can all be, it can all be done at the same time, though, because we've got two capture Oh, yeah, cards. absolutely. Um, I however, just didn't know which way around we were yeah. going to do it. Oh, yeah. I guess we're going to show this off first, aren't we? Yeah, we may as well while that, logical. while that burns. Yes, yeah. indeed. Um, so, yeah, uh, I'm just going to swiftly, quickly swap a cable out because I need the long cable. Can't you just go... Uh... I don't, that's not going to reach. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. Snapbar. Yes. Oh, no. Yes. The battery. Oh, no. Yeah. Find the, find the charger <laughs> point. Well, that depends on where you've hidden it. Uh, oh, no. This isn't a HDMI cable at all. Are oh, you, no. Are you trying to use, like, a USB lead or a DisplayPort cable or something? It's Do you also port. just unplug the actual cap? Oh, I did, because I was planning on I plugging thought, another yes, one in. Yes, but I thought you were going to switch to the other camera first. Good God, this is turning into a comedy of errors, isn't this, it? This is, so, this is suddenly gone spectacularly wrong very quickly. Oh, uh, my God, Lord. Is it not down there? We might have to adjust our camera setup. I, I feel like, okay, all right, so... We no, won't. It's not in there. I'm, 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 yeah, there it is. <laughs> no. Oh, no. <laughs> All right, hold up, hold up. Oh, dear. Do not adjust your television sets, everyone. <laughs> um, um. So we weren't going to say anything because we were hope we were waiting to see if... Um, <laughs> we were waiting to see if anyone would notice it and then we were going to talk about it but we were experimenting with using a different camera um we got a um uh there it is yeah uh we've got a camcorder set up on hdmi capture um which from the from the experimenting that we were doing before stream was giving a much nicer image and we were like oh yeah that looks good we'll set this up we won't say anything and we'll wait to see if anyone goes, have you changed the camera? That looks really nice. Um, and so I then went around to change the cables around. So we've got the long HDMI cable, which I use for HDMI capture to plug into this PC. I went over there, unplugged the HDMI cable and then went, this is a display port cable. This is no use to me. And then I spotted that the low battery light was coming up on the camera as well. And it's like, battery. And now it's all gone horribly wrong. <laughs> Right. It's somehow using like 87 plugs. Yes. Um, easiest place to plug that in. I can unplug something from down here. Can you? Yeah. Because I had no idea what was actually in use down there. Yeah. Um, uh, right. Hold up. We'll, we'll bring it all back in a minute. Bring it all back to you. Don't oh, stop. Never right. give up. I don't think we're going to need the quick today. So we'll unplug that. <laughs> I don't know what we do need, but it better be quick. Ah. All right, there's that. Good. I need to find an actual HDMI cable and not a DisplayPort cable. Man, it's a good thing that I made sure that the C920 was still set up and pointing vaguely in the right direction, <laughs> just so I was able to be like, oh, webcam. <laughs> uh, the disc is ready. The disc is ready. <laughs> The disc is ready, everyone. <laughs> and people say, oh, you should do live repairs. No, <laughs> this is why you don't do live. <laughs> Terrible idea. Terrible idea. Oh, mm, I'm going to have to steal a HDMI cable from someone else. I need to buy like five or ten nice HDMI cables because I just don't have any. 
I was going to say. All the ones you do have are yeah. a single meter long. Yeah. Yeah, all the, all the display cables I've got are all obnoxious, to be sure. And I'll have what I have. That's a shorty. There's a lot of sun, I'm sure. No, that's a shorty as well. Hello, people. I tell you which one isn't short. Okay, hang on, hang on a sec. I think the thing that makes this all worse is I've given you a box of display cables. We don't need a display cable though. We need a HDMI cable. No, of, of cables for displays. <laughs> of of things that carry video images from a computer to a display of some kind. Them them things. Them their things. Oh dear. Oh, they get used in some places. What do mm. I don't know. Ah, right. Plug that in to the camcorder. We'll yes. get that back on. Absolutely. Where, where, where is? Right. So, um, where is capture card? Ugh. Uh, let. Oh, it's under here. Yeah, yeah. Plug that one in, and then. Um... I was looking for a <laughs> that... Express one. Oh God! It's a good thing we're it's a good thing we're doing this live, isn't it, everyone? I will get back to chat in a moment, everyone. Um, mm. Right. Stop. Okay, I need one of the crap short HDMI cables for the Lian Li now. Da -da -da -da. <laughs> oh my word! What? Why do short HDMI cables even exist? So you can do ultra tidy cabling runs for your really small desk. Yeah. All right. right. This plugs back in, so we've got the Liami back. Okay, Liami is back. We've got a burn DVD. Ooh. Okay. Fancy camera is about to come back on. Let's put the laptop to one side for a sec. Ah, we're now in um, 5x4. 5x4? Let's have a look. Ah, yes. Welcome to my home movie, everyone. <laughs> it's fine, we will resolve this. Mm. And nice to see that I've got a green hue across my face again. <laughs> Um, right, I'm going to quickly catch up on chat while Caradog sorts out the picture. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, that's fine. We'll just keep doing this. This is this is perfect. Um, oh, hold on. Right, I'm, uh, where are we? How many texts does it take, take to change a cable? There we go. Technically zero, because the cables have been changed, and by this level of performance, it would be difficult to believe that either of us are texts. So, uh, what did I use to burn DVD? We've got a Blu-ray drive jerry-rigged into the Lianli over there, and I just used the um, Windows 10 native image burning. Looks like something from 90s reality TV show. Yeah, a little bit. Um, since you're in a computer store, you're expecting to have lots of cables lying around. I've got lots of cables lying around. They're just all bad cables. That's the problem. I need to buy some nice ones. Square picture is very period correct for Windows XP. That's a good point. We should just drop to like 640 by 480 and just do a standard definition stream and just be like, yeah, let's, uh... let's commit to this. How old is this camera? Really old. This is like really early um, 1080p. It's not bad though. Didn't, we, didn't you reckon this camera was like 10 years old? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. So, right. And then we just need to, we need to go toward the door a bit more. Oh, oh god! Yeah, we need to send it. It's really loosely mounted on the tripod, so it just twisted. Oh, I see. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. That'll do. And yeah, that's 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 good enough. Uh, what happened to the normal cams? Still got them. We're just experimenting with this cam, um, because this camera gives a much uh, is giving us a much sharper picture, and we just wanted to experiment with it because like, I don't want to be using webcams forever, so we were just kind of experimenting with different cameras, just seeing how the setup works. And like, if this works well, then we would invest in a better camera or something like that. The other benefit, of course, is because this has optical, mm. if Graham was showing off the Lian Li, he could do that. 
Yeah. Without having to fiddle too much with the camera setup. Yeah. And like, how far can you punch in on that now? Yeah. Like, he's just punched in and now come all the way back out again. Yeah, you can't do that with a webcam. Uh, that's the thing. That So... That's the that's why we're fiddling with this because we're just like what can we do with this setup you know, so yeah. Okay, right looks good looks good. Da -da -da. Win eleven won't install on bare metal. Oh, is that right? Uh, yes, because as far as I can tell, the the, the image is literally just the ten x development image, ah. which only worked in specific VMs. Ah, cool. I care. I care even less about it now. From the very small amount I've seen of it. Oh. Fair enough. <clears throat> Get out. Right. Be gone. <laughs> okay. Just right. Stop. I think we've managed. I'm getting rid of the storm. All right. <laughs> Caradox had enough. <laughs> I can't work in these conditions. I think we've, we've right. We've got to the point of where we were about fifteen minutes ago in the stream now, aren't we? Aren't we? Yes. Have you have you plugged in the HDMI? No. Is there power? No. Do you have power available for this? Yes. Are you certain? Yes. Do we need to unplug something else? No. First? Good. Do you want to plug them in? Okay. Good. Right. <laughs> Do you know what else we need? What? A keyboard and or a mouse for this. Uh, yes, that's easy to achieve. Good, good. I, I'm actually gonna get. Oh, I, well, I don't. I don't have one for you as well. But I'm, I'm like, I'm actually gonna get the cider that I've got in the in the kitchen in a minute because I feel like we need that for this stream. <laughs> oh my god! I'm like, this, this situation needs alcohol really badly. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I mean apple juice because I've I've no idea if we're allowed to drink on this stream or not. Are we more than fifteen minutes into the stream? Mm. Because as far as I, that's a good point. It's, it's really weird. The YouTube rules for what you are allowed to do and not allowed to do mm. for videos and live streams depends on how far into the video you are because if you're you're not allowed to swear more than once in the first 15 minutes of a video for monetization mm. but after the first 15 minutes they don't seem to check maybe it's because it's be theoretically it's been 15 it's 15 minutes of airtime since an advert so there's a 15 minute airtime gap between the the advert youtube's partnered advertisers Maybe. and the point of swearing. Maybe. Like, they're like, 15 minutes has passed since since people saw the advert. Like, there's probably some oh. horrifying statistic that people have forgotten what the advert was after 15 yeah, minutes. Yeah, I guess. I, I, guess. I bet Maybe. it's something along those lines. Yeah, absolutely. No, I, I, yeah, yeah, possibly. That would be also, do we need we need the DVD drive plugged into that, don't we? Well, not right now because we're just plugging. No, we're yeah. just we're just turning this on. Yes, we're just turning this on and going. Look, here's three D Mark two thousand one. Look how crap it is. However, so, for anyone who remembers it, you you guys are going to be nostalgic as heck. When I saw it, I was like, oh, I used to I used to be so excited about this. So three D Mark two thousand and one, mm. based on my sources, yeah. is the very last three D benchmark. They actually used a real game engine as opposed to something specifically built to be a 3D test. Ah, do you know what engine it used? Uh, was the it one from it? the Matrix. The, the, as in the, the shootout scene yeah. from the Matrix is from the Matrix game. Was... When did Enter the Matrix come out? I don't know. Are, are you, are we, are you, when you say the Matrix game, do you mean Enter the Matrix? I don't know. There were lots of Matrix games. Oh, okay. Yeah. I can't remember. Of course there uh, were lots of Matrix games. It was a big budget video, studio. Video, keyboard, mouse, power. Yeah, that thing's ready to go. Mm -hmm. uh, that's fine. It, it's done. Sometimes this thing power cycles a couple of times and then it starts. Uh, right, that's the keyboard and mouse for it. Good. Uh, and now... Ah, lovely chipset fans. Oh, yes, and I need to plug in the other... Oh, God, those chipset fans can do one, man. This The motherboard is terrible for those It's plugged in fans. there. Oh, you've already plugged it in. Yes. Right, right I will organise HDMI capture. Right, I need another HDMI. Uh, let's duplicate this scene. Duplicate. Mm -hmm. So now I can fiddle with this scene without ruining everything forever. And then I want another video capture device. Uh, video capture device. And I want it to be USB video. 
Oh, look, it's the XP desktop. Yeah, right. And now we're going to bring that down below the Brio, below the Live Gamer Mini. And now I'm going to migrate us. Oh, that's the wrong one. Now I'm going to migrate us. I'll unlock scene. Now I'm going to migrate us up there. There we go. There we go. <laughs> fading away, fading away, fading away. Can there I we still go. right click on that and go manage? Yeah. Yep. So you can check the device manager and just go sort of look, we have we have drivers now. So yeah, we've got a lot of we've alerts. Got quite a few of them. But... Yeah. But that's not bad. Like yeah. the e the Ethernet controller, that's the Intel Ethernet controller. They're just XP drivers for that just don't seem to exist. Yeah. But this thing has dual Ethernet. The real tech Ethernet controller is installed. So we've got yeah. Ethernet. Uh, one of my Wi-Fi adapt, one of my USB Wi-Fi adapters also has XP drivers, so I can get Wi-Fi to this thing now as well. That's not confusing. Um, <laughs> oh yeah, I'll, <laughs> I'll move the mouse cursor for this. Yeah. Um, then um, uh, yeah, the the SATA controller, um, uh, Snappy Snappy driver installer, which did all of the hard work for me. Snappy driver installer, really good actually. I hate driver installers, but Snappy driver installer actually very good. Um, that found a, a, a driver for the Asmedia SATA controller, but it just, you install it and then it, and it says installation successful, then it appears as no driver again. So it looks like the driver it's got doesn't work. Um, uh, and then there's a couple of warnings on those um, PCI to PCI bridges, but that yeah. might be to do with the fact that we've got no ACPI or something like that. Possibly. Um, overall though, we've got a functional computer and the fact that we have fu fully working through, the other issue as well is, um, We've got graphics drivers, but we don't have the Catalyst Control Center, and the capture card has managed to make a, uh, make sense of it. But when you actually plug this into a HDMI monitor, you get under scan, so the picture doesn't fill the display. And you'd be able to fix that in Catalyst Control Center, but we don't have we don't have Catalyst Control Center. If you just hit demo, and it will just start running the demo, um, which will be the bit that everyone recognizes. Uh, hit no to that, otherwise it's going to run at 640 by 480. So yeah, um, and uh, yeah, the the one that we used was um, Snappy Driver Installer, really good, really good. So yeah, so um, anyone, so hands up in chat, uh, anyone who knows 3D Mark 2001 from back in the day. Um, so yeah, oh, it's a little bit dark. That's just the capture card. I might brighten it up. Or I might add in a little bit of gamma on the capture card. I remember trying. Uh benchmarking the original GT520, mm. 5200, something like that, from NVIDIA. Basically, a media card way back in the day, and I was trying to play games on it, and it, it, it wasn't good. I remember mm. playing Need for Speed Most Wanted at about 7 or 8 frames a second. <laughs> right, Colour correction, let's just dial in uh, one gap. Can I have a singular gamma, please? No. One gamma. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. There you go. Just bumped up the brightness on that a little bit. Um, this software predates me. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, there's probably quite a few people, actually, who are just like, this software is older than I am. But yeah, I remember seeing this running in local computer shops when I was a kid and just oh, being gosh. like, look at that. I want that at home. Um, like my my local computer shop when I was a kid, back when in the days when local computer shops just had shelves of motherboards and graphics cards and CPUs and stuff, because that was where you bought your stuff from, you know, because the, you know, Amazon wasn't a thing. You could, the, the internet was a thing, yeah. but you didn't buy your computer on the internet. You bought that from a shop. Um, and they would have a demo PC set up in there with like a 15 inch LCD. And I'd be like, oh, it's a flat panel display. Look how thin it is with like a 25 millisecond response time, you know, yeah. um, and they'd have it running this on loop. And I'd be like, oh, so this is so special to me, you know. Is the 3D Mark demo actually Here's the matrix rendered? Scene. Is it actually rendered or is it just a, a video? Oh, uh, it's being rendered in real time. Yeah, oh, this right, is okay. real time. Yeah. yeah, that's the point, you know. Um, there's a bit too much gamma on this. I'm just going to back that gamma off a bit. That's destroying the colours in this. Uh, Look at those faces, though. Yeah. 
filters. Pew, 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 but again, pew. of course, you know, uh, Matrix Fever was still a thing. Um, there we go. That's better. Matrix Fever was still a thing back back then. So if you know people were looking at this, going, "Ah, oh, that's awesome," you know. Well, yeah, but the film's only been out for like two years at this point. Uh, Matrix was ninety seven, wasn't it? No, it was ninety nine. Was it? Oh, I thought it was ninety seven. I always seem to remember that Matrix is early, is older than people think, but I yeah. could be wrong. I'm pretty sure it was ninety nine. Yeah. Or two thousand. Yeah. I can't remember. So, something along those lines. It, yeah. it, it was reasonably new. Certainly recent enough this. that it was the pinnacle of action movies. Yeah. And bullet... It, I mean, it. well, it made bullet time a thing. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, actually, might I go so far as to suggest that The Matrix invented bullet time? I wouldn't like to stake a claim on that. Yeah. They, I would, they I would definitely have... popularised it. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah everyone's saying ni 99, yeah. Um, but yeah, I think there's one more demo we might have. Oh no, there's the credits. Uh, yo, I thought at some point we had the uh, the 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 monster truck thing. I think that's the game, but I thought the monster truck was actually included in the demo as well. Yeah, you know, try a game demo. This is only in the pro version. Oh, okay, yeah. Oh. oh, the the monster truck is the benchmark. Um, stick stick. Yeah, car chase. Yeah, the games. Yeah, stick the uh, um, make sure the benchmark is set to uh, yeah, that probably looks fine. Yeah, just run the benchmark. Sure. Okay. Yeah, let's just see what it comes out at. I was going to say uh, we 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 want it to actually run at a decent resolution. I think it's yeah, it's going to run ten twenty four seven sixty eight. But who cares? Well, Here's the car chase. Correct for. Oh yeah, this, I suppose yeah. Yeah. The important thing is though, is you're not getting weird. Oh my god, the, the FPS. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there we go. Boom! Solid nine 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 FPS. Yeah, supposedly. Oh, we oh we dropped some frames there. We're dropping some frames there. Only nine hundred and twenty FPS. Ooh, dipped into the eight hundreds. Oh dear. That's that's no good. How that's... the thing that's quite interesting is I'm pretty sure this is showing that it's got DirectX eight on it. Yeah, this is DX eight, which is good for playing. Well, it's good that it's showing that it's not got mm. rendering errors. For that, because oh, I see. Yeah, the fact feature that set and stuff got ripped. A load of yeah. DirectX seven and eight features yeah. got ripped out of um, mm. more modern graphics cards yeah. around the time that the X nine C came out. The the fact that this is running properly is indicative that yeah. I will be able to play late nineties games on this without any fuss. Because yeah. that that's that's why I want this XP setup yeah. is so I can play late nineties games on bare metal. Loads of people last like there were loads of comments on last last week's um, stream saying, "Oh, just run it in a VM and stuff like that." And I'm like, "No, you're missing the point. I want XP on bare metal." Yeah, because um, there were hardware features, so yeah. they've like Deus Ex, um, certain lighting features in there. Yeah, RDX seven only. Yeah. Oh yeah. Also, that key is legitimately from their website. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> did they did they just say you can have this for free now? Here's a key that works on it. All of it. Yeah. 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 It's like, oh, yeah. I mean, I don't know if I can be bothered to install it and try and play the game um, because, like, we're uh, an hour, well, we're 45 minutes into the stream. And, oh, uh, well, actually, uh, uh, we'll come back. We might come back to this. We'll see what, we'll see how the rest of the stream goes because I, I want to try and install this 64 bit edition and just see if that's yeah, actually absolutely. viable. Have you copied um, everything off of my Samsung SSD? Uh, I ha uh, everything that I want from it, cool. yes. Okay. Um, failing that, there's a red, um, there's a red, uh, the shelves at your knees. There's a red SSD there. Uh, I believe that. Oh, that force cheating. Yeah, this is some grotty old 120 gig SSD, and I was going to use that as another burner SSD, effectively. Oh, that says Corsair cool on it. Yeah, uh, that is shockingly heavy. Metal it's got a metal plate yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. Also, the case feels surprisingly nice. I think it's because at the time, these things were so expensive that they wanted to make them feel like a... We're talking about this, by the way. Um, yeah. Uh, SSDs were so expensive in this era that they want they, they had to make it feel like a premium product. Otherwise, mm -hmm. people would be like, what, I paid £500 for a piece of plastic? Yeah. You know, whereas I guess, th these yeah. days, no one cares. Yeah. You know, it's just like, yeah, I don't I don't care. What I don't care if it's in a plastic box. Yeah. But back then I'd have been pretty pissed off to spend the the hundreds of pounds that these things cost mm. and it be in a plastic box. I'd be like, Really? You couldn't give me a biscuit oh, tin? That'd be quite nice to do. 
mm. is to take this out of this case and put a modern two and a half inch inside it. That'd be kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah. Poss possibly um, yeah. remove the sticker. That'd be good for pimp value, but then on the other hand, just you don't exactly pimp a two and a half inch SSD. No, but also just to case of it's red. And mm. also if you had red RAM. Okay, yeah. You yeah, could, you could be color interesting. code up and it's yeah. quite a nice case. Well, also, especially if you were running like a two terabyte SSD and you bought a two and a half inch one because two terabyte yeah. SSDs in two and a half inch are good value for money. Yeah. So, yeah. Exactly. So stuff like mm. that. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. If, you, if you install XP 64-bit, the 16-bit games might not work anymore. Yeah, yes. that's what I'm concerned about. And that's, yeah, why we're that's... Going to that's why we're going to install this on a different mm. SSD, just because we've got a working setup. And if this doesn't work, it just means we can just plug this SSD back in. Yeah. The so, yeah. other thing as well, is, as Lloyd CW said, is there were physical address extensions to mm. increase the RAM. Ah, yes. Interesting. I can't yeah. remember exactly what it was, but it was something like a 36-bit address lookup or something it could mm. then do. Interesting, yeah. Because this thing's got 16 gigs of RAM in, but we don't need that. No, It just absolutely. happens that. Like, I'm not going to leave this... This build isn't going to run XP long-term. It's just while I, you know... I, well, Deus Ex is basically the only thing I care yeah. about. Basically, for my game streams, I'm going to go through the Deus Ex games, as I mentioned at some point. And yep. De Deus Ex 1 is awkward to run on modern computers. It's absolutely doable. It's just awkward. And having XP running on bare metal that I can HDMI capture will make my life significantly easier. So I just yeah. want to play Deus Ex 1 on it. Then I'm going to probably going to reformat it anyway. And it's going to turn into um, uh, another utility computer in the shop. Absolutely. So, the other thing as well is, I guess it'd be also well, reasonably sure. nice to see like Dungeon Keeper running natively on something. Ooh. Just because you liked Dungeon Keeper. Yeah, maybe. Um, not not as a stream or anything, but purely yeah. just the case of kind of going, yeah. look at this, I actually managed to run this old game from my childhood. And also like AoE 2 original edition. And AoE yeah. 1 original edition. Just yeah. I mean, a couple of bits like that. Dungeon Keeper ran like junk even back in the day. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But more of just the case of because you can. Yeah. Um, but yes, that would be interesting, yeah. yeah. It would be interesting to go back to um, uh, the Age of Empires 2 retail edition as well, if I've still got my disc yeah. for that, because uh, Definitive Edition is so, so good now, and it would be very interesting just to put it side by side with the original release. Well, don't tell um, some people that the Definitive Edition is good. Really? Have you have you heard have you, have you heard descending edition? Because I like when definitive edition first came out, I was like, this isn't changing my world from HD. But the more I've played def definitive edition, and the more I've seen the amount of work they've put into the game balancing and stuff like that, the more I'm just like Microsoft, the 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 team that did AOE two definitive edition really really cared about that game because it's the 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 actual unit and game balance now, especially for competitive play is so good um so yeah H hd is good um but the game balance in hd is broken um in H in hd you build your unique unit you decimate the enemy whereas in definitive edition um there are you can the strategy actually counts if you like yeah uh, in aoe in in hd cavalry was one of the most devastating units in the game Whereas in Definitive Edition, someone comes at you with cavalry, you pump out um, pikemen, which are one of the cheapest units in the game, and your cavalry will fall against pikemen. Yeah. And it's at, there's actually counters to the overpowered strategies now. Yeah. And they've also massively nerfed um, longbowmen, because longbowmen were devastatingly OP in the original game, because they had longbowmen had the same range as a trebuchet with 100% accuracy. Just let that sink in. Trebuchet range, so you can outrange a castle with a longbowman, and you can you, uh, a team of longbowmen could destroy a castle, and they have 100% accuracy at anything approaching them. <laughs> but yes, unfortunately, unfortunately you only got 99,983 <laughs> D marks. This Gosh. PC's not good enough. <laughs> Will 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 that get me seven point one points in the Windows Vista score? No, <laughs> because as far as I'm aware, Windows Vista and it goes up to five point two. Or was it five point two? I thought it was seven point two. It was some no, arbitrary that, number. Seven wasn't it? seven was Windows seven. Oh, okay, fair enough. <laughs> yes. Used to love Canon ears in AoE. Lloyd, 
I despise Bombard Cannons. I despise them. They're still OP as hell. Bombard Cannons are the devil's work. Anyway, I, I, I digress. We're not talking about Age of Empires now. <laughs> uh, anyway, right. Uh, I need to erase this SSD. You do? Yep, I will be right back. I need to get another keyboard and mouse because I've stolen the keyboard and mouse for that one. Good, good, good job. Oh, let's let's allow whatever DXT1 textures are with a 24-bit Z depth. Yeah, let's... I suppose the funny thing is you could just crank this now up to oh you're trying to run it 1080p. Yeah, 1080p. Ooh. And so this will be interesting, yeah. And just kind of seeing what difference, if any, it makes to stuff. Yeah, we've got the underscanning problem again. Yeah. Um, but yeah. That's that has that's not bad. The scaling isn't bad, and the fact that a game that like a demo that was designed to run at like ten twenty four seven sixty eight has scaled up to HD, and the engine isn't breaking or anything. Yeah. Because like an old engine like this, you would expect to see problems with the engine. Like again, the well, we, the frame rate is oh yeah four hundred FPS. Yeah, it's tanking the frame rate. But it's so, also drawing double the number of pixels yeah but again like the the hardware we've got here is so much overkill so the, oh, the, the fact that but it's don't... still dropping that many frames shows that the engine is having difficulty with this yes don't forget you have to specifically build engines for high speeds yeah like um as proven with uh is it it tech six that's running doom eternal or is it seven? I can't remember which number one. The Doom Eternal six. version yeah. of IdTech, the IdTech yeah. engine, that they specifically spent time yeah. on it to make it so the engine was capable of running it 1,000 FPS. Oh, nice. And stuff yeah. like that. But they, but they specifically... Because yeah. Doom 2016 is um, locked to 200? Something like 200 or 250 or something yeah. like that. Yeah. But they spent actual development time running mm. through the engine and cleaning stuff up and tidying stuff up at ridiculous frame rates because the engine needed actual work to get to that speed mm. even if you were providing basically zero load to the system yeah is a case that the engine obviously needed to support it as well but yeah interesting but yes however the answer is yes it looks like you can do it at 1080p with dxt1 textures whatever they are yeah that's the problem, kind of going back to this. You look at stuff and just kind of go, I don't actually remember what some of these things uh, are. Well, that, that's that's the annoying thing about game settings. It's, it's like anti-aliasing. You know, every time I buy a new game, there seems to be another acronym in the anti-aliasing list. And I'm like, I don't know. Is that better or worse? You yeah. know? And it's just, it's like, I, I just assume now that the list is in order from, from bad to best. And that if I want more, if I want better graphics. But then there are some games which people say it will actually look, it looks sharper if you drop that a notch. Yeah. And like the, the highest level anti-aliasing isn't necessarily what will look the best. I, run, I tend to run with no anti-aliasing. Yeah, I, I, I'm I, also I never it. put it up to full. I always tend yeah. to pet, I, I generally tend to set anti-aliasing to a, a medium level and see how that looks. Yes. Because I will, sometimes a little bit of sharpness looks nicer. Yeah. I will certainly run even... I basically, in general, run no anti-aliasing mm. or the bottom amount kind of thing. Just like... Or maybe like 2x MSAA. Yeah. Or something like that. I'll, I'll run like that and that's it. Um, I feel in an awful lot of cases, it kind of becomes irrelevant when you're playing it like 4K. It's... You know, far less relevant just because there are so many more pixels in the image. Yeah. The, the stair stepping and so on is so much smaller. So, yeah. Hmm. That's relevant. But yes, congratulations on getting this edition of XP to our <coughs> function. Yeah. Yeah. And as I say, uh, kudos, to, um, uh, kudos to Katrina and Postal as well for giving me the tip off about um, Snappy Driver Installer. That really was the key. Um, I might have been able to do it without it, but it would have taken me another week. Whereas Snappy Driver Installer, it just did exactly what you want a driver installer to do. Whereas as soon as someone said, oh, use this in driver installer, I was like, oh, I really don't like those because nine times out of ten, they're malware. So, yes. right, bam. Um, cool. 
Right, so we're going to change over the S. Yeah, we're going to change over the SSD and put that in there. And also plug in and, an optical drive. Yes. So I'll get the front. the SSD. I'll get the optical drive in the front. We'll leave the panels up, I guess. Uh, yeah, may as well. Uh, I'll prettify this another time because, as I say, I wanted to move around some fans and stuff to finish the build. Um, yeah. But I don't think that's what we're actually going to cover in this stream at this point. So I'm going to move this fan out of the way as well. Plonk. 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 There we go. Right. I don't know how I feel about this side. Yeah, they're 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 a bit weird. The side panels. It, the fit it. The fitment is not great. On yeah. The face. I think they're, they're easy. They they go in easier than you expect them to. So when it actually goes on, you're like, is it on? Yes. You know. We also need a SATA data, please. Yes. Oh, right. yeah. Oop. And so I saw one on the desk. Okay. You plug that in because you're closer. Do you know which one you burn? Um, the one that wasn't in another zip file. You need to turn it on first. Are we plugged in? Yeah. Cool. Activate. Is you the disk in here? No, it's there. Uh, let's see. The newest version of CCleaner now has a driver updater. Yeah, because CCleaner is malware now. Yeah. yeah. C CCleaner um, Piriform got bought by Avast or AVG? It's basically Avast. the same. Avast. Avast yeah. own AVG. Oh, I thought it was the other way around. Well, AVG owns they're, Avast, they're the same remember. company. Yeah. yeah, Avast and AVG are the same company. They bought Piriform, who makes C Cleaner, and now C Cleaner is filled with rubbish and, and is trying to push rubbish on you. Yeah, ditch C Cleaner, everyone. It's... Use Bleach Bit. Yeah, Bleach Bit. Yeah. Bleach Bit. Because it's it's uh, also because open source, mm. so you can literally look at it and see what it's doing. Mm. And it runs as a portable. Yeah, it's That's a bummer because C Cleaner was used to be really good. In, back in the day, C Cleaner was really good, um, but yeah, it's it's super no bueno now. Did you uh, relabel the HCPI? Yes. Whatever the uh, yes. However, I save I save the BIOS profile. Uh, let's switch back to that. Do you think? Um, I saved the BIOS profile before I reset it, so um, uh, we can just load that profile that worked for the other one if we want to. Uh, however, um, as I say, I feel like if we have to butcher. Um, well, no, yeah, well, we, I suppose we could, yeah, it depends on what we're trying to achieve here. It, it, like, my, my interest is just, can we get ACPI? Uh, but then on the flip side, that's, I, given the fact that we know, we know that we don't need ACPI for the graphics card to work properly. Yeah. Um, that's not really a problem anymore. Because last week we were. Oh, uh, yeah, it's the same ACPI. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. So, uh, right. Uh, fine. So what I suggest then, if you dive into BIOS, load the profile, and then start installing that, I'm going to burn the other disk image. Yeah, sure. Um, I'll get another burner. Um, uh, I'll burn the other disk image, and then we'll see if that one can load with ACPI, because then we can also see if that's made any difference. However, it, yeah. I don't know what we're looking for now, really. I guess we're just looking to boot this up and just see if there's any noticeable difference between them. Yeah, I suppose so, the other difference might be Windows updates because the the addition of Windows the the thirty two bit Pro version that we've got installed there has no updates installed on it at all. It's yeah. vanilla. Um, so, the what state is the BIOS in currently? Does it currently have ACPI enabled? It's enabled at the moment. Yeah. Right. Well, so then that means that this installer is not useful. I suppose so. Yeah. Because if it is enabled in the BIOS and that can't find it, this one is not useful. Yeah. That that's the thing. It's a, it's a case of what are we what are we actually looking to achieve with these additional ISOs? They um, just install clean and don't need you to fandangle. Yeah. That's what we're looking. For. Yeah, yeah. So the answer is yeah. So you're right. It's already failed then, hasn't it? Yeah. yeah. That's that's the stage I was expecting it yeah, to fail at. That's, that's why I said we should check the other one yeah. to see if it fails at the same stage. If it doesn't, it might have been then interesting just to see if, like just to see if it worked as 64-bit Windows as well. But then on the flip side, I don't really care about 64-bit no, or XP. Because like each each program will still be limited to 2 gig yeah. and things like that. So Yeah. I do, and like 
Consi consi the only reason why you're running XP is because you're wanting to run XP era stuff. Yeah. And XP era stuff doesn't need 64 bit anyway. Like this no. was the same. This was the conclusion back in the day, back when Windows, in the late days of XP, people were running Athlon 64s and were yeah. like, oh, we've got 64 bit hardware. I want a 64 bit OS. Mm. But the counter argument to that was, we don't need a 64 bit OS yet. The point. It, that's the future. But yeah. nothing utilizes that yet. It was also just kind of a case of the point that it gave you more RAM so you could have all of your stuff and things open. Yeah. So you could have two programs both using the maximum allocation of two gigabytes, use up your four gigabytes and still have two or four gigabytes free. Yeah. That's that's to me what the benefit and use and point was. Yeah. Was just it giving you that option. I'm gonna grab another DVD you. All of the things. I can erase this disc, but I don't I can't remember how long it takes to erase a DVD RW, so I'm just gonna put another one in the drive. Probably the same length of time it takes to burn. But it's also That's, probably yeah. these three discs that you've burnt for this computer are probably the only three discs you've burnt in the past twelve months. Uh, maybe rest, maybe yeah. even thirty six months. Yeah. <laughs> So, using up a DVD doesn't particularly matter. Mm, pretty much, yeah. I have zero interest in optical drive burning. Uh, right. Well, no, I have great interest in burning optical drives. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I still don't have seven zip. Oh, for Christ's sake! Oh, let me get my let me let me get my um, uh, wireless adapter. If I can get online. Uh, it's all over here. <sighs> No, it's there, isn't it? That's the one. Yeah. Good lord. Imagine being prepared and stuff. Why, why do I need Wi-Fi? Just testing you. Just testing are, you. Are, you, are you okay, Graham? Just testing you. Have, have you slept this week? I don't know. Okay. Sometimes I wonder. Oh, dear. Uh. Good lord. Uh, 7-Zip. I was talking to someone the other day who said uh, they'd sent their tech, that they'd sent their um, tech friend something in 7-Zip and their tech friend was just like, I can't open this. And and he was just like, what? Yeah. You know, that, that person, in, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. There's, there's, there's lots of different areas of skills and knowledge. That's a diplomatic response. Fair enough. Well, no, but it's true though. There yeah. are. That's because true. that's the same as saying, oh, yes, I expect someone who is a website coder to understand how to fix a boot manager is missing issues or issue on Windows. Uh, they're yeah. both software, okay. but they're very different areas of knowledge and expertise. So I can understand someone not knowing that. But at the same time, it's kind of a case of you'd expect someone to be aware of what file formats were mm. and at the very least be able to Internet search them. So yeah, but it's also a case of yeah, just seven zip is multi-threaded, and you know, compressing files at like 150 megabytes a second is yeah. certainly that much being said impressive. Seven zip could stand to be slightly less janky than it is for for the user experience of seven zip is terrible. I don't know, and I'm surprised that it hasn't improved in any meaningful way over time. What's wrong with it? Just. The interface is just jank. I don't know, man. It just it, it looks like a file explorer. I don't know what more you want. Do you want, to, do you want it to have special skeudomorphic UI elements for you? Do you need it to have a nice oh, soft yeah, I drop? Want, shadow? I, I want yeah, skeudomorphic. I want it to to be like a. I want it to be fashioned like a vice. And when you when you hit the compress button, it, it squishes things on the screen. You know? uh, the problem is, I don't know if you're joking. Or not. <laughs> I am joking. Do not fear. Uh, Burn disk image. All right, that's that's spun up. Let's see what's going on in chat in the meantime. Uh, zip. Ah, oh, I've not heard of pzip. Um. Da, 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 da. Um. Um. But yes. Pzip is that based off of pkzip? Do do do. Yes. yes. Mm. There is there is an interesting um history if you look into all of the like compression stuff and mm. things um in the 90s about compression wars and software stuff 
P zip is boomer tier. Oof. <laughs> wow. You just uninstalled CC Cleaner? Yeah. I hate to be the bearer of bad news. I take no pleasure in reporting this to you. Yeah, it's like um, yeah. um Piriform's Defragler. I never liked Defragler. It was good, but it was so slow. Defragler yeah. to Defragler works in a ge on a geological scale. There's also the fact that I've never particularly noticed a performance difference between defragging. You know, mm. between different tools for it. Yeah. So you might as well pick one that's at least quick. Yeah. I, I wish OusLogix wasn't a death trap for malware as well, because OusLogix Defragger, the portable edition, which is difficult to find, you've got to look at you've got to look up an old mirror for for OusLogix Defrag Portable. That is the best defragger I've ever yeah. used. Have they actually taken um, it? Yeah, that you can't find website. it on their website now, yeah. Um, I, you, I mean, it might be on there, but like you've got a Google search portable download to find a hot link to it, kind of thing. I cannot find it on their website anymore. Oh, but goodness. if you actually down, if you download any other Auslogix software or an Auslogix installer, you get a bunch of adware. Yeah. Oh yeah, you know? absolutely. You had um, them for a couple of years. Yeah, exactly. You? The um... any love for WinDIR stat? I love WinDIR stat. That is a very, very handy utility. The only thing that makes me fractionally sad is the fact mm. that there doesn't seem to be a new version in about five years. Not that there's anything that needs to be particularly mm. changed on it, but just the fact that there hasn't been an update means that when it breaks, yeah. I don't expect it to get fixed. Yeah, that's true. That's true. And also some of the versions get picked up as a virus by Windows Defender. Um, what, when well. they asked that? Oh, no, sorry. Of, um, oh, yeah, no, sorry, of OusLogix Defrag. When they yeah. asked that, actually got, a, actually got a new version not that long ago, I believe. Did it? Yeah, it's, like, oh, it's not that, that visually different. But no, like, no, no, but, but it purely means that the yeah. person who made it at least is paying attention yes. to it. Yeah, so if it the, the website got broke. overhauled and everything. They've got oh, a practicing sweet. website. It looks really good now. probably give them some money at some point. That's not a bad idea, yeah, because, yeah, I WinDIR stat is a godsend when you're trying to organise someone's SSD. It just, yeah. If, yeah. if you're watching, if you've never looked at... Win, if, you've got an S, if you've got a small SSD, download and take a look at WinDIR stat. It, what it does is it models the hard drive and counts the file size of everything so you, can, so you get a size order list of everything on the drive and a visual box, a visual chart showing the file sizes in proportion kind of thing so you can see what's using up space on a drive and it's incredibly useful when you're dealing with a computer that has a full hard drive or a full ssd and you need to see where the space is gone because sometimes you look at someone's computer it the hard drive the this the ssd says it's full and you're like but there's 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 no pictures there's nothing in the yeah. downloads folder where is the space gone WinDIR stat will help you find it yeah. it's very very good uh, you like WizTree over WinDIR? Yeah, faster than it in general. I haven't looked at WizTree. I might have a look at it as well, though, if you say it's faster, because that that could be useful. Because, yeah, WinDIR stat is not terribly quick. Certainly not on a hard drive. No. Um, on an SSD. Obviously, wasping around on an SSD. Yeah. yeah. It's neither SSD here nor there. so overkill in performance. That, yeah. yeah, exactly. Forget about it. Uh, right, this disk has been successfully burned to this image. Congrats. I hope, hopefully, the image has been burnt to the disk, not the disk to the image. I promise nothing. Oh dear. I'll let you plug that in because you're on the right side. <laughs> All right, let's see if this is any good or not. Uh, your thoughts on. Uh, is that nanite? Nanite? Is that pronounced? I don't know what that is. What is that? Um. Tree size is free. Good to clean out hidden files. Yeah. Oh, good to clean out hidden files in the volume shadow copy. That's interesting. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. I feel like like when you start getting into that kind of area, that's not that might not be terribly good long term because it's kind of like clearing temporary files. By their nature, you can clear your temporary files folder, but it it's going to build up again. Like if you check it two hours later, there'll be more stuff there which in my opinion means there's very little benefit to it. It's one of the reasons why before CCleaner became adware, I had stopped using it because you get that feel-good factor of clearing out all of the temporary files, but 
they will just build back mm. up again. They're there by they're there by design. It's uh, kind and of. And I I have a suspicion that the that any stuff in Shadow Copy will be the same deal. But that being said, there are certain times where you need to free up enough. Like if you're working on something where, like if you're on a 32 gig netbook and you yeah. need to do a build update and you need to find 10 gigs of storage and yeah, you've got exactly. to scrape every last megabyte off of it just to install that update and yeah. then it's fine and you can fill it back up again. Yeah, exactly. That's when utilities like that are your best friend. Or like if you're trying to shrink an image down to fit onto a smaller yeah. SSD and you know as soon as you as soon as your job is done it doesn't matter if those files repopulate mm. you just need to get rid of them just to do the operation that you're working on yeah absolutely you need you need the um image mm. you know you need to resize the image or you need to shrink a partition things like that yeah so obviously it's great for when you need to do that specifically yeah and then you can expand a pop um let everything expand again afterwards. Mm. Nine, I uh, choose your apps you want to install, and it creates a single installer for them. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, yep, that's handy. Not something that I would use, but I can think of like in the past there have been jobs where something like that would have been invaluable. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but then on the other hand, those are the same jobs where I really should have learned how to deploy via group policy. But yeah, indeed. Time to swap the display capture. Uh, yes. Whoop. Bam. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Okay, yeah. That is what we expected. Fine. Yeah, all right. It was just a case of, I wonder if it's got different drivers or yeah. something that might allow it to detect differently. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> is, it, is there any more value in this? Have we got anything else we want to discover with this? Or no. are we at the point now where we're like, yeah, we're done. We don't care about this anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, cool. All right, let's move on to something else. That's, that's all it was, was purely a case of seeing if they had a different AC. Yeah. A Oh my ACPI. God. ACPI driver yeah. or interfacing method or something. They just mentally yeah. detected the motherboard differently yeah. and then functioned. Yeah, the fact that you still have to jump through hoops to make these installers work on more modern hardware means that, well, as far as we're concerned, defies the point of them. Because if you have to go jump through hoops and do all this work, you may as well do that from a retail disc anyway. Yeah. Um, although they might have some updates slipped streamed onto them, but then obviously yeah. XP is considered a death trap on the internet, even when fully patched. Yeah. So therefore, who cares about updates? If you can't be fully updated, there's no point in installing any updates. I think. Yeah. Basically, uh, there's probably there are, there are well, a few. Yeah, there that's a, few, a bit of a sweeping generalization. But there are a few which are worth adding because they were like compatibility ones and yeah, you know, and like um, blue screen issue fixing and stuff yeah. like that. So yeah, that's absolutely. yours. I'll let that put. I'll let you move that back toward your stuff, and those are your CPRs as well. So yeah, so there are a few like that. They're mostly like the enterprise ones, though, mm. effectively. Um, and I'm yeah, I'm sure someone's compiled a list of them somewhere. It's like with Windows Seven. There are you know, there's the optimal update order. Yeah. And stuff like that. There. Yeah. Swift on security made. Yeah. Yeah. Do do do. Uh, no, no. Opts out of piggybacked Pupware too. Oh, that's neat. Yeah. Bigsod says hi. Yes. Do do do. Stock Windows XP support only installs. Uh, stock Windows XP only supports USB 1.1. Was that? Uh, well, I think we're assuming Service Pack 2 here. Service Pack 2 has got native USB 2 support. I think, as long as you've got your drivers installed, obviously. Um, so yeah, I mean, when I say stock, um, yeah, when I say stock XP, I I am assuming at least Service Pack 2 because come on, that's reasonable. Like if you go back to day one XP, then you don't have Wi-Fi support either. Um, just like, yeah, day one X service pack two was a big deal for XP. So was that, so was that, um, SP3, to be honest. I suppose. Yeah. Well, did SP3 include any actual feature updates though? Uh, I don't recall. Yeah. Because it's been too long to care. Yeah. Politely. Hello, Walker's PC games. Um, to a degree, the same with, um, yeah. Windows 7. Yeah. It's been way too long to actually care. Yeah. Whoops. It is ultimately completely irrelevant. Yes. Considering Given... Ken's been out for five years. Yeah. I think the thing that's quite academic. a culture shock is um, installing like 15.11, Windows 10 build 15.11, mm. and then having like um, 21H1. 
just kind of being like, oh, oh, okay. <laughs> What? They actually did quite a lot of work to this. Yeah, there have been actually a lot of changes. Mm. Fair enough. Oh, you have three of these. I had never quite realised you had three of these. Uh, yes. Yep. Um, well, there were four because there's the black one as well. However, the black one, um, uh, a bunch of the keys have stopped working on it. K is out. Um, and yeah. also I found a couple of other letters that aren't working either. So I'm just Good. like, yes. Good job. Yeah, so sadly, it's a case of this one is no longer useful anymore because oh, well. a bunch of the letters don't work. So that makes me sad because, um, yeah, these are genuinely useful. I might buy another one to, to fill the gap. I feel like it's worth um, looking at others. Yes, I need to have a look and see what else. What I, I need to see what alternative. We're talking about these Logitech K400 keyboards, by the way. I've got like three or four of these kicking around the shop. Um, and, uh, oh, I, this is a plus. Uh, this one's a plus as well, yeah. K four hundred plus. I ne I need to see if there is a a better version of these because these are incredibly useful for what they are. It's a keyboard with a built in trackpad and it's wireless. Um, however, the keyboard is dreadful to type on and the trackpad is dreadful to track on. Um, it's they're not very good. They're just incredibly convenient. Yeah. Um, so it would be nice to find something like this that's good, basically. So yeah. Uh, so yes, you do great videos. Thank you very much, my dude. Much appreciated. Um, so yeah, and uh, C Cleaner Alternative that Caradog mentioned, as uh, Fluffeth has said, was Bleach Bit. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. I have only used it twice in anger, I yeah. think. Um, but again, it's also the software that Swift on Security mentions, and I trust their recommendations on face value. Oh yeah, Swift. Yeah, if Swift on security vouches for something, then you know it's going to be pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, cause they they are very particular about ensuring that they don't endorse stuff. They would have to be, wouldn't they? Yeah. Well, they don't have to be. Hmm. Oh, particularly. Yeah. Because obviously you can endorse whatever you want to endorse, but I they guess. want to they want to be their credibility rides on. They it, want to be cleaner than they than possible. They want to be yeah. absolutely spot on direct straight and so on yeah uh i need that there we go yeah that's me again hello if it is yeah i'm just setting up just while we're chatting i thought so um just do doing something else the objective of these mo for, for those of you who are either new or have only been um who have only tuned into some of these we're sort of pivoting i say pivoting uh, we're sort of adjusting the format of these streams now that we're trying to be doing something while we chat. So that way, you know, there's less downtime and, you know, we've just kind of got more to do, if you see what I mean. So uh, the, ne the, the next thing that I brought just to, to play with is um, uh, this is one of Caradog's mice. What is this again? It's a G7 2008 edition. G7 2008 edition. It's a G5. G5. Yeah, it's a G5. Uh, and as you can see, the cables come off of it. So we just thought we'd fix this while we're while I'm we're going chatting. To break that adapter. Let's take oh, right. that adapter. Oh yes. <laughs> uh, right. Brio control. Focus one two three. Focus one two three. And also, can I just make sure that we're not at ninety degrees? We are. Thought that was a. Uh, there we go. Zoom in the hearts. Ah, put that over there. A loop. Um. Right, you're typing on a K400R, perfect for your HTPC. Yeah, absolutely. These keyboards are, that's what these keyboards are really good for, HTPCs and stuff like that. Um, but I'm sure that, I'm sure that you'd agree with me that if you put um, one of these, one of these K400s um, and uh, a good keyboard side by side on a desk as a typist keyboard, there's no contest, absolutely no contest. Yeah. So yeah. Well, certainly. Well, and yes, the, biggest... I, the K830 is um uh is, whoops. Uh, yeah, I think I was never <laughs> one. The K830 is the one that I've got that's dead, unfortunately. Uh, where have I got it? Just so I can. Yeah. Here it is. Yeah. It's the it's a case. The issue with these though is the trackpads are yeah that... weak. Yeah. It's just the trackpads have lots of issues. Yeah, that's the K830. So this this is because I was using this on my main PC for for when I first got it. I was using this one on my main PC for a while because. Um, it is a compact, low-profile, wireless, backlit keyboard. And that is a very long string of features that is very difficult to find in any other keyboard. Low-profile, compact, wireless, backlit. 
there are all there are very very few keyboards that have that many things in one unit but unfortunately yeah as i say this guy's broken k doesn't work q doesn't work and there were there was like one or two other keys on it that have died this has happened in the past week or so so yeah mm. unfortunately i'm very sad but this guy is kill so yeah i'm super sad about it the trackpad still works but i mean if the keyboard doesn't work then what's the point you know yeah. so this thing has been consigned to one side now and uh, the receiver for it i've just programmed that to one of my other keyboards um so yeah the great thing is, is that these are all logitech unifying so you can reprogram the receivers to different keyboards and devices when you do that does that stick in the device so you so i can pull it between machines uh yes oh okay yeah interesting yeah the the logitech unifying software is brilliant um it, they've got a specific utility for yeah. it and you start the utility you pl you plug in the receiver you start the utility and it says turn the device that you want to pair off and on again you turn it off and on again and it pairs it to that receiver and it oh, stays paired until you pair it to a different receiver ah, right okay. um, so yeah it means that if you lose the receiver you just get another unifying receiver and reprogram to that right. and it also means that like you could take one of these, like your Logitech K400, and then you could get, hang on a sec, where, where did I put it? I've got a mouse over here. Yeah, here we go. Here is a, here is just a random Logitech wireless mouse. This is a Anywhere MX. Um, you can then take this and program it to the same unifying receiver, and now you've got your own custom keyboard and mouse combo as well. Uh, so you can combo up any two devices you want. Logitech unifying absolutely amazing and no one else has managed to duplicate it i've not seen see. anyone else that allows you to do that right i didn't realize the pairing stuck yeah that was that was my concern yeah um because i bought mx master threes or something like that mm. which support using the unifier receiver or bluetooth but they don't come with the receiver and i mm. thought if i paired it using that software i'd have to um always have that software installed yeah to use it with the receiver yeah and also as Thailand just said yeah the k400s these things are really efficient on batteries the k830 i mean ah uh, because of, i think they put a rechargeable battery in it because of the backlight um i think if it, i think that backlight would probably drink double a or trip or triple a batteries whereas with a lipo cell in there it's not a big deal uh, if it weren't for the backlight, I would have been quite happy for them to have put double A's in that as well. Because, yeah, just Logitech's wireless software is so efficient. Um, but because yeah. of the backlight, I don't think they'd have gotten away with sticking um, alkalines in there. So, yeah. You get you get six hours of use. Woohoo! <laughs> yeah. However, I have to admit that that K830, well, I mean, I only, I recharged it like, I recharged it every couple of months. Mm. So it's not like it was a big deal, you know. I have, I'm pretty certain, a Logitech keyboard and mouse combo mm. where I'm yet to replace the batteries in the keyboard. And I'm pretty yeah. sure I bought it like eight years ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, it doesn't amazing. get much use, yeah. but it's a case that even just the battery self-discharging hasn't happened. Yeah, it is amazing how there are some wireless devices that really do seem to run on hopes and dreams. Yeah, absolutely. You know? So uh, anyway, so yeah, this mouse, I'm going to start taking this mouse apart and we're going to put the cable back on it. Um, so yeah, X Masters. Yeah, I just, um, I, I really want to, I really want to really get into Logitech's graces um, for doing, like I will quite happily do reviews for Logitech if they, if I could get through, if I could get through to their marketing team. Um, this has got the uh, removable weights as well. Yes. Yeah, very cool. Um, I would quite happily Ooh, do reviews for them because I've got I, I Logitech peripherals are really good. I mean, that actually that much being said, when we start yeah. going into stuff like G Suite and things like that, it gets a bit more shaky because uh, Logitech G Suite is a bit rubbish unless I'm mistaken. The new, the newest, the newest software because there's been three or four versions mm. um, since I first started is using it. Screw I don't there. think so. Um, the newest of the newest software, that mm. one seems to be a lot better. Um, but like the old one that was like the intermediary one between set point and the current stuff. Yeah. Those two seem to be pretty terrible. Yeah. I think the issue is as well is they've got so many different apps. It's, it's like, you know, well, uh, they're, they're all in one and they have mm. been all in one since they replaced set point. Yeah. Um, and set point got replaced in what, like. 
2012 or something. So it mm. combined them all quite a while ago. But it's just been a case that they've all the software was a bit naff. Yeah. Well, it's kind of like now, like for the. Uh, for these K400 keyboards, the official software for that is Logitech Settings. Not Setpoint, not Logitech Options. Yeah. Logi uh, then, like, the webcams are Logitech Camera Settings. And it's just like, why isn't there a single program that just does all of these? There is. It's G-Hub. Yeah, but then there's also all the separate independent ones as well. And just, mm. I don't know. Although I suppose maybe you don't, if you've got just one thing, if you've got just the webcam, yeah. you might not want the entire G Hub suite. Yeah. So I can kind of relate to that as well, I guess. Yeah. So. It's effectively the light edition, as far as I can tell. Yeah. Yeah, that's true, I guess. Yeah. Although, yeah. Hmm. Something's holding up, holding me up here. It feels. Ah, there it goes. Ah. Oh my word. Was that me? I don't know. Well, there's another cable that needs fixing. You broke my back buttons. I might have. It's, it's fine. We'll fix it. We have the technology. Good. This doesn't look as horrifying to take apart as other Logitech mice that I've worked on. Cool. Let's uh, bring the camera in a little bit more. I'm going to go down to there. And then I'm going to focus. I think that's good enough. Uh, right, let's unplug the remains of that. Does the wheel actually come on? Probably. Without like making a horrifying mess. I'm going to take this off and fix this first. Um, huh. see. Oh, oh. Logitech G Hub is a bit weird, but it got better. Yeah. Do -do -do. Just because I'm going to clean this wheel. As we've got it apart, I'm going to take off the um, years of... Oh, finger. yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it's a good time to actually do it properly. You're um, over there. Oh, there's glass cleaner. There is IPA. And there is a toothbrush as well. Uh, let's see. Uh, any interesting repairs this week or pending? Um, Nothing super interesting. Lots of routines in at the moment. I've got a couple of videos in the works that I'm looking forward to um, that need editing. Uh, I can't remember specifically now. I know I've just got a couple that are in the queue. Um, I've got a good keyboard swap. I've, I've done a video for a heat staked keyboard because lots of people have requested me to cover how you replace heat staked keyboards. So that is in the works as well. I've got to figure out how these cables go in, which one is red and which one is green. I suppose it makes uh, red and green. Which one is uh, black and which one is white? I suppose it makes sense that they'll be in the same order on the pins. Oh, RBW. That makes it nice and easy. Cool. So I need to restrip those and resolder them. That should be easy to fix. Um, let me just. Where is my. Where are my side cuts? Those will do. Doo -doo. Oh, no. Uh, let's see. For the left-handers, learn to use right-handed and you have more choice. <laughs> yeah. For the left-handers, consider not being left-handed. <laughs> yeah. Although Logitech do make ambidextrous mice as well, though. They're just not very good. Maybe. I My my requirements for mice are go. not very high. I You know, like, I don't demand a lot from a mouse. So, like, there's lots of stuff where... The, you know, I, I'm not left-handed for the record, but there's lots of features that are lacking from their ambidextrous mice that I'm just like, I'm not bothered about that. Although I think if you want like a Mova mouse or something like that with the, um. with the nine with the nine pad on the side, then you're basically screwed. So. Ugh. Yeah, I haven't found a single nice-ish like gaming mouse that's ambidextrous or left-handed. Hmm. To get my soldering iron to hand. There are there are just the generic like internet surfing mouse that are there, but it's just kind of a shame because I mean I guess there's only ten percent of the population, but at the same time it's like Is it as low as ten percent? It yeah. certainly was for a while. Yeah. Because, you know, being left handed is apparently Yeah. Evil. Oh, Sai says he's left handed, but he's never used a mouse with his left hand. 
that's interesting if you just learn right-handed mice from day one. Yeah. We, uh, we had an employee who was left-handed mm. and like set everything up left-handed for them. Yeah. And they said, I can't use this computer. <laughs> None of this makes sense. And I was like, what do you mean? It's it's just a computer. Yeah. And they're like, yeah, but everything's backwards and it's all wrong. And I was like, what? Oh, sorry. What do, what, what I, do you mean? I, I set it backwards because I thought you were backwards. What do you mean it's yeah. backwards? They're like, well, the, the, the clicks and the things. And I'm like, it's left-handed. And they're like, oh. And I was like, oh, do you not want it to be? And they're like, yeah, no, please, no. Yeah. And I was like, oh, okay, fair enough. <laughs> fair enough. I was attempting to be inclusive and ended up just annoying you. Um, right, I've got way too much temperature on that first. I guess we're just going to solder at 500 degrees. Ah. Yeah. Also, I, I, need to, I need the vice for this, really. I need to vice this up so I can hold it properly. Urgh. Time to make everyone mad with my soldering skills. That's the that's my favourite thing to do in these streams. At least it's your soldering skills. I guess, yeah. It's true. <laughs> it's not me. Uh, right. Uh, fork in the left hand and knife in the right too. Oh, this will make a lot of people mad. Is um, I I eat with, I'm right-handed, but I always have my fork in my right hand. That definitely gets a that gets a lot of people's goat. Certainly did my parents. What, because you were wrong? Yeah. <laughs> See, in my opinion, I was like, well, I'm controlling everything with the fork, so I want that in my dominant hand. That was my logic. And, you know, I will, I'll always stand by that. So, yeah, at the dinner table, people think I'm left-handed. <laughs> Be schmutz everything. Yeah, this tip is super, is super screwed. What did you do? Uh, it's just been, it's just been abused and needs to replace it. I've got the replacements, I just need to actually go, I've been holding off on, on fitting the replacement one. And just, you know, I've been waiting until I needed it. I need some tweezers. Um, but it's at the point where it's just like, it's time to change the tip, Graham. You have had your money's worth out of this tip. It's, it's time to do, 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 do. die. <laughs> there we go. Right. Let's add a little bit of flux on there and just see if we can clear those holes. I spent maybe 45 minutes mm. trying to solder two wires. Um, <laughs> the, the couple of day, a, a couple of days ago, it was probably a week or more ago now, mm. actually. Um, but I was uh, trying to move a power supply. And to stick it where I wanted, I need to take the cables off and stick them back on. Whip the cables off, not a problem. And then I went, oh no, I haven't got any wick to clear the holes. <laughs> so I was there for like five minutes trying to dig it out oh, of the holes. Oh no. And I was yeah. like, no, bugger it. And just pushing the wire through. Yeah. Holding the soldering iron whilst trying to hold the device. And I was like, this would be really easy if I had a vice or wick or tools. <laughs> and I was just like, eh, yeah ages just trying to get the things in yeah and then i got them in and then i desoldered one of them no <laughs> yeah and i was just like oh oh finished is good enough i am so pleased no one can see me struggling with this simple task yeah heavens it yeah. oh it yeah was 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 not good was not a good time you weren't watching you were only listening to my suffering Oh, were you in the uh, disco chat at the time or something? Yeah, I was on a di I was in the Discord chat with yeah. Sonny, and it was just like great, great suffering. <laughs> <sighs> but yes, it was. Um, the reason I wanted to move it is because you know the um, I was about to call it the IBS. It's not an IBS. Um, IB Max battery charger, the lipo charger that you've got. Oh yes, yeah. I've got the version that has the built-in power supply as yeah. well. Yeah. That built-in power supply is not very good. Oh. It it runs way too hot. Yeah. It runs hot enough for the battery charger. Does it not have a cooling fan in? No. Oh, I thought the one with the built-in power supply had a little 40 millimeter fan in it as well. No, it just has a hole for you to fit one. Oh, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> um, but like... Um, Safety it gets, features not included. Yeah, it gets hot enough for the screen 
to basically stop being able to display an image. Oh, wow. That's a lot of heat. Yeah. So the display is still on and functioning, but the display is actually too hot to display an image. Yeah. So if you put a fan on it and yeah. cool down the display, images start appearing again. Oh, yeah. That's not a happy LCD. Yeah. Right. So I removed the power supply from it to stick it outside the case. Yeah. So it could have passive airflow yeah. just to see if that reduced the temperatures. No, it still smells like melting every time it charges something. Oh. I'm just like, wow. That, yeah. that's, that's a crap power supply. I'm, ca I'm kind of glad I didn't get the one with the built-in power supply now because I, I nearly did because obviously yeah. it's significantly more convenient. Yeah. But in the end, I cheaped out because I was like, I have a bench power supply. You know, yeah. just anytime I need a power source, I just t switch on my bench power supply and use that. Yeah, that's what exactly. it's for. Yeah. You know. Or as, as it is, it takes just a standard Toshiba charger. Oh, yeah, that's not It'll bad. It'll take like yeah. an 80 watt Toshiba charger. Yeah, that'll do then. Which yeah. is what I'm going to do. Yeah. I'm going to take a Toshiba charger, take the cable off of it, and solder directly onto the board. Okay, yeah. And then slot that inside it. Yeah. And go, oh, look, ta-da, suddenly not at 150 degrees. Great success. Now what we need to see is if it works when the cable's attached. Yeah, have I put that in upside down? I think I might have. Yeah. No, I can't have put that in upside down. Did I put it in back? Yeah, no, that has to be in the right way. I think it just wasn't pushed down far enough. Let's try pushing that down a bit further because it's the... Those buttons don't contact anything, though. I don't understand how that fits in. Unless I just don't have that lined up properly. Oh, there we go, yeah. It's just got... That can't be right. That one needs to be there. This is very confusing because when I put the like, so there's there's two little guides for that circuit board to fit in. But when I put the circuit board in those, it doesn't actually align with anything. Am I going completely insane here? Does it go right up there? Oh, I think that might be it. Yeah, hold up. I think I think I figured it out. Chat's probably screaming at me. There we go. Yeah, that was it. Yeah, those are, those are doing the thing now. There we go. There we go. Those are now actioning. Good. Action. Do do do. Cool. Right, that's that done. Uh, so, are you disassembling for the uh, main board now? Well, you're disassembling because things are bits are falling out at any rate. Yeah, because I'm trying to work out where the cable actually goes onto. Uh, one, two, three. And I think it's the reverse of the pads there. Oh yeah, that that looks like it makes sense. <laughs> That's what she said. Do do. Oh, I think the Ooh. screwdriver might be too big because I'm keeping circuit board with it. <laughs> ah, there's a spring there. What's that contacting? Uh, the sensor to make sure that that is oh, yeah. in alignment with the case. That was very brave to blow on that while there was a spring on it. <laughs> hmm. That's a that's that's a interesting that it's a double layered board. Or oh, well, a double stacked board like that. That is soldered on, isn't it? I have no idea where the wires are. Yeah, so... I have legitimately no idea. Let's have a look. You can just lift that off because the pins are moving. Uh, it can't be because um, it's soldered on both sides. Oh, because the pins were moving. Yeah. I don't think they're supposed to. They were. Mm. Um... Right, so where does the USB go? So it comes in there and then gets channeled to the to this side. Hmm. I'm wondering if it's supposed to go to there and there was a there was, nothing fell out of there though, did it? Because I'm wondering if that went into a micro connector. 
Uh, oh, I'm completely off shot here. Good job. Uh, so we're trying to figure out where the USB cable connects on this mouse board. I have a suspicion it goes into there and there's supposed to be a connector and we're missing the, uh, the, the connector. Uh, in which case, um, I mean, we could desolder that and just solder directly on. But then how you'd have to route the wire all the way over there. Well, you could go between the boards. If we put this yeah. back in. Eh. Oh, yeah, there is a channel that it can go through, though. Yeah. Do -do -do. Morning, Dave. It's all right, we're fixing a mouse. Maybe, anyway. I promise nothing. Oh, well, while Carol fiddles with that, I'm going to be like, ah, see, now what we can do with this camera is we can go and just punch down a little bit. Oh, 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 oh. oh that's oh, on super right. tight now. Right. There we go. Right. That then goes. Right. That goes. Like that, that goes like that. And build out. That comes through there. Like that. <clears throat> Oops. That needs to go around to that side. It goes on through there. There you go. It goes like that. Aha. Uh -huh. So yeah, so there is a um there there is a JST connector that we're missing. It probably well, rattled. Like that, like that. Yeah. The JST connector must have rattled out at some point somehow though i don't know how nothing fell out i would we would have noticed if it had fallen out wouldn't we yeah um yeah so i suppose we could remove that jst and just solder directly onto the board the only thing that i question about that is just how many pins there are there to how many cables there are there should be five coming out of here, so we should have a, a, a spare. Yeah, we've got we've got four plus shield. Okay. Um. So yeah, and it's a six. Oh no, that's a five pin connector. Yeah. So four plus shield. Um. So yeah, technically we don't need the shield. Yeah. Might be a little bit delicate. We're gonna have to commit to that if we want, if if we're going to, because we're gonna have to remove that JST connector. But then on the flip side, it's a case of, but like, um, this is a, this is a, we're we're working on a we're we're going we're going death or glory on this thing, aren't we? Well, it was already dead. Yeah, we're 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 death or glorying this mouse because if if no one so if no one reattaches this wire, and like I'm, I'm I can't be bothered to find a JST connector to fit that and then solder onto that. So yeah, we'll just solder directly on. It'll be great. Cool. All right, we'll do that then. Um, let's see. Uh, let's see. My PC shut down properly, but it won't restart from, from Windows screen. Turn off. PC won't off until I force to turn off. Huh. Uh, I shut down while holding shift. Yeah, that sounds like some kind of hardware issue there. Oh, I agree with the BIOS update calls there. Hmm. Hot glue that lead in place after. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. We need to make sure there's some strain relief there. Very good. Uh, okay, right. Okay, well, I'm going to vice this thing up then and we'll keep fiddling. Ooh. It'd be cool if we can fix this because I really love this design of mouse. Um, I used to have a... Um, I, can't remember the, I can't remember the model name of the one that I used to have. Um, the design came from an older model name. Um, which someone in the chat might know. And um, I used to have one, and it was my favourite mouse for years. Right, pop you out. What design are we talking about? Uh, this this shape, this chassis, the shell. Oh, did you have the... Um, was it the 518? MX500. Oh, it's the 500. Yep, the MX500 is what I had. And that was my daily driver for years. Must I must have daily driven pretty, that MX500 yeah. for about 10 years. Pretty sure the MX500 came out just after this did. It was the replacement for this. No, the MX500 came before it. 
The MX500 wasn't even laser. Or, well, no, this isn't laser either, actually, is it? Um, where's the, where's the actual skate? Yeah, no, the MX500 was um, the start of that okay. shell design, I thought. But no, it is a Class 1 laser product. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, the MX500 was um, um, was uh, 800 DPI uh, optical sensor. Because I, rep I replaced the red LED in mine with a blue LED because I was hectic in the day and I put blue LEDs in everything because blue LEDs were cool. Also, arguably, technically, would have had ever so fractionally better tracking options. Probably because worse. Short, because shorter wavelength. Oh, I guess, yeah. If it were set up for it, it would yeah. have. In a way, it, it did improve the tracking on a lot of desks. Because a lot of desks with light wood grain like this, the blue light was more visible on it than red was. Yeah. Um, and so it t that mouse actually tracked better on bare wood grain than a red LED mouse did, which was interesting. Unintentional, to... but the, the case. Stand up. My, yeah. my, my leg was twitching. Yeah. Also, just... you have opted for that one instead of the the, the flat top one. Um, the stool's I mean... fine. I was just oh, sitting okay. funny, oh, and right. my leg had started twitching, and yeah. I just realised <laughs> that it was going it on. was twitching that as well. I was <laughs> like, oh, that would be very right. annoying when you're soldering and everything's moving. Right. Am I going to be able to pull that off? I'm. I'm going to turn that all around. Uh... I'm going to see if I can desolder this without the hot air. This is the point where everyone's just like, no, no, solder! Yeah, maybe. I don't, I'll buy some sometime, maybe. All right. However, I am going to reflow the solder, and we're just going to see if we can blow this, see if we can get this guy off. Doo -doo. Meow. You find these streams relaxing. You like this format better as Caradog talks more? Good. Yeah, that works well. A lot of, like, I've, there's been lots of comments of people going sort of, oh, maybe if you let Caradog get a word in edgeways. I don't deliberately talk over Caradog. Um, however, I'm so used to soloing on camera that I'm just used to just talking all the time. So, yeah, it's a case of I don't do it on purpose. However, yes, if Caradog has an opportunity to speak more, then that is good. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, Although, obviously, it's you know time and place and all of that, and actually having something relevant and useful to comment with. Yeah. I am amazed that the scroll wheel is an optical encoder. Just yeah, you know, just stuff like that. It's just like yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. They they always were. Yeah, but just the fact that that's how it's done. It's done because light beam gets stopped. That yeah, scroll. And yep. I'm just like what? How do you tell direction? I was about to say <laughs> what impressed me is means that they can tell which direction it's been stopped in. Presumably, there are two sensors in yeah. the uh, in the sensor side. Um, so it can detect the the beam interruption, you know, a split second between yeah. them, in order to sense mm -hmm. uh, direction of scroll. I found I I saw a very funny video um, about. I'm changing that. this tip. This tip is fucked. Um, Continue. Someone had one of the Logitech mice, which had you know the very aggressive paddles they had on some of the scroll wheels. Yeah. They had one of those, but it was a freewheeling mouse. Mm. They had that, and they took an airline. And spun oh, right. the wheel. It's something like eighteen thousand RPM. Yeah. And they would then test which games crashed. <laughs> Basically, <laughs> if you gave them like eighteen thousand RPM of scroll wheeling, <laughs> and like the number of programs and stuff, it just flat up silent crashed. That's really interesting. Like that's not something that you'd ever imagine. Yeah. Um... It's just like. Ah. But at the same time, I guess no one will ever has ever actually, you know, tested whether their program supports eighteen thousand RPM. Yeah. Scroll wheel input. Because who needs eighteen thousand RPM of scroll wheel input? <laughs> it's a very silly situation. It's also amazing, and I love it. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I don't think I mentioned actually si since we haven't done any soldering lately, but um. Um, but yeah, I've I've now acquired the um, I've now acquired the Pine sixty four fine tips. I posted this on um, Twitter a while back. But um, here is this is the BC two, which is the um, uh, the I don't know what you call this type flat conical. I don't know, 
Um, so that was the BC2, which is one of the small tips. Let me focus in a bit closer. So this is a, uh, a, a smallish tip for electronics. Now here is the, the micro soldering one that people bang on about. Yeah, now that's a fine tip. So yeah, that, this thing is awesome. This is the one that everyone was telling me to get. And so I've got one now. It's heckin' awesome, man. It's really yeah. cool. That, that, that is an out of context tip, yeah. <laughs> That's a fine tip. That's a fine tip right there, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, what is this soldering iron set to? We don't need 400. It amazes me that those tiny little tips can actually apply any heat and stuff as well. It's surprisingly effective at it, yeah, because again, that's something that I was always concerned about is because I've used I've had small tips without it's because of the in it's because of the in tip element. Um on my older soldering iron, my web, because the because the heating the actual heating element was all the way down at the almost at the handle, you couldn't get heat all the way to the end of a fine tip. But the modern ones are so good now. They're absolutely fantastic. Yeah. And what is the teeny tiny tip? The teeny tiny tip, I think it's BC2. Um, however, if you look at the Pine64 website, uh, it might be written on the side, it might not be. Pine64 website, they have a fine tip kit. And this is from that kit. The fine tip kit has got a lot of useful stuff in it. Nope. Um, so, yeah. Also, no. <laughs> yeah, they're not written on the side. Of the the miniware tips have got the model number written on the side of them, but these third party ones don't, unfortunately. Let's see if we can warm this guy. There we go. Ah, oh, straight out. Easy peasy. Easy peasy. All right, did we get clear holes? No, of course we didn't. That's fine. Now we'll clear those holes. Accidentally connects to your cameras. Yeah. Uh, you can get most or all of the tips on Prime as well, uh, on Amazon even. Yeah, nice. And yes, these do also fit the TS100. I've switched to my pine sill here just because um, it means that I don't have to pull the tip out of the TS100. The, um, someone asked me, uh, I, I actually Postal last night asked me on, um, uh, on Discord, um, because I have a TS100 and a pine sill, and Postal said, which do you prefer? And I said, well, because I've got the same firmware on both soldering irons, they're functionally identical now. They're basically identical. So um, I now have a different tip in each iron, and it's faster to pick up the other soldering iron than it is to swap out tips. So that's what I do now. I just I use them both for different tips. Um, but yeah, in terms of actual sort of quote unquote performance, they're basically identical. Of course, the Pine still has the USB type C input on it, which is also useful. But I use a barrel jack anyway, just because um, that's more convenient for my for the wiring setup on my bench. There's a breakout board for the Pine still. Uh, yeah, for development and stuff. If you're writing firmware and stuff, it lets you get directly into the microcontroller, I think. Uh, the fine tip set, there we go. The fine tip set contains a TSBC2, a TSC1, a TSILS, and a TSKU. And it looks like... I think the it's BC... the TSC1, which is the teeny tiny one. Yeah. Oh, those and then the ILS looks like an angled one. Yeah. From this the... not particularly great photo. The TSKU is the knife edge one that I'm a big fan of as well. Oh, no, wait. The C1 is the angled one. The ILS is the flat end, just circular, conically one. Mm. So yes, the T-S-I-L-S. Huh. Also that... Uh, uh. You are right there? Have you put your phone in something icky? I've apparently put my phone in something. Yeah. Oh, those holes are not clearing. Come on, come on, Wick. Do your job. Come on. I feel like I've been on this board for too long already. Oh, there we go. They're starting to clear up now. If I trim my wick and go in one more time, I think those will open up. There's a, there's a weird thing with wicking. is just sometimes you want a little bit of solder already in the wick because that 
gives the other solder something to flow to. And sometimes that it, sometimes that's helpful and sometimes it isn't. Sometimes a bit of extra solder gets the wick going. There we go. Clean. <gasps> oh, come on, man. Those holes won't clear. I might try blowing them through. Sorry. Oh, I forgot there were screws there. <laughs> Hang on a sec. I need, to, uh, I need to move the camera out of the way so I can do the blow technique. Don't read into that. <sighs> Hello everyone and welcome. This is in fact PG-13. <laughs> That's not working. I'll try the pin method. Yes, stab it. You oh. should buy a kit to use your pencil at some point. Yeah. I love it. Telltag bought one and oh, has I might... basically no use for it. Yeah. <laughs> I super glued these screws to this pin earlier on because I used this pin to clear the super glue. So I now I now have a screw that is super glued to my pin. <laughs> Ow, there we go. Okay. That that's that that won't be funny to anyone except Caradog and I, because it was relevant to an earlier joke. Oh. Right, let's see if I can get these heckin' holes to clear now, because I'm having trouble with these holes. There we go. Uh, there we go. Uh, here, Granny said, Pine Sill, wonder what he's cleaning now. Yeah. Blow harder. Uh, well, I could uh, get a solder sucker. Yeah. Use your solder removing tool. I, th yeah, I could, I could do actually get the specific tool I have for this specific job. I could get the tool that is designed for this function. Yes. I think that's good enough. I don't even know if I'm going to be able to thread those holes anyway. Uh, there we go. Oh, Rick Lakes, thank you for the $10. Also, there was a super chat earlier on that I completely missed. I saw it come up in chat and I completely forgot. Hold up. <laughs> back um, scrolls through. Hour yeah, and half I, of chat. I do actually need to back scroll a load because there was a super chat and I saw it come. Oh, it's gone off the top now. I saw it come up and I was like, oh, super chat. I need to respond. And I just forgot. I got distracted by something. Hang on a minute. I'm just going to see if I can find out. Viewer activity. Thanks. YouTube, thanks. Um, who super chatted earlier on? Be honest. <laughs> who was it? Who did it? Yep. Um, damn it. Oh, yeah. Someone super chatted earlier on, and I can't remember who it was. I'm very sorry. Can't remember who it was. Can't remember what it was. Yeah. But there was something about yeah, something. There was a super chat earlier on. Uh, where can you buy a TS100? Uh, oh, was it you all dreams? Yeah, I'll, yeah, I know you're you're a supporter. So, um, so yeah, thank you very much for the super chat, all dreams. I do appreciate it. I missed you earlier on. Sorry for that. However, yeah, just in that moment, I suddenly remembered. So yeah, Rick Lakes and uh, all dreams. Thank you for the super chats. And yeah, buying the TS cheaply. Yeah, AliExpress, I think. Uh, Michael Martin as well. Uh, are you guys wrecking some tech. We're fixing. We're fixing. In the same way as those VMUs were fixed. Okay, firstly, ow. <laughs> um, but secondly, well, hopefully with more success than that. Yes. Don't um, forget these will want to go up, not down. Yes. So we want to come up up through there. Yeah. Yes. I need to strip all of this back first and clean up the end of this cable. Let's move this out of the way for a minute. Ugh. Ah, right. The poor potato VMU. Yeah. In my defense, it was already broken. Just someone more talented than me might have been able to fix it. Possibly, maybe. Okay, guys. Yes. Ah, Christopher David, thank you for the super chat of $20. Thanks for your from the Pine Sill Fine Tip set. Ah. You are most welcome. Yes, the Pine 
group consortium? Pine 64. The, yes. I don't know what they are. If they're a group, a consortium, a company, a charity. Big saying. Like, if, I may, if that makes sense, I don't know what their entity is. Yeah, there's, there's, there's one dude. A convent. Who, there's one dude whose name I keep forgetting, and I really should remember him because I want to have a chat with him, who seems to be like one of the driving one of the driving forces um but i don't actually know if he is pine 64 or just their main developer guy or like the main uk you, 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 you. uh yeah i i need to pull back slightly so i stop wandering off 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 shot that is surprisingly hard to move in a coherent fashion it's because you're on the opposite side of it when it's mirrored it's Astonishing. Oh, also hard. the fact that I can't go back properly because yeah. the arm goes like that. Yes. So I can't go this way. I have to go that way. Okay, there we go. Right, I will carry on doing this now. I've got to figure out what the pinning for this is going yes. to be as well. Yes. One was broken, two were working. End, end result, two broken, one working. But we all learned a thing along the way. Yes. E eBay can solve a large number of your mistakes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> also, I just just to add insult to injury, the Dreamcast itself is broken. Um, whack whack whack. Yep. Yeah, I I finally got my capture rig set up for it, and there's no the the Dreamcast is dead. It turns on, it lights up, and the fan goes and everything, but it's brain dead. There's no output from it. Oh. Um, yeah, so I'm really I'm I'm a bit sad about that because I thought the Dreamcast worked, but it's obviously just sat in a box for too long. Are you gonna try and fix it? I had a look at it um, because I like I measured voltages and stuff like that to see if I could get a rough guess as to what was going on. But all the all the voltage rails are present and stuff like that, so it's just like, uh, and without actually doing research into common faults, I wouldn't know where to start yeah. with it. Unfortunately, it's a bit of a effort yeah uh you got one sitting if i want to mess with it maybe postal i might be interested i might i might be interested in that you'll just have to deliver it yeah possibly um <laughs> i will i'll have a ponder on that uh right let's see let's strip these eh. i don't i don't have any small wire strippers so i just use side cutters mm. side cutters and mad skills Yes, infuriating. What, my mad skills are infuriating? They are mad in the sense they infuriate. Yeah. <laughs> Not mad as in excessive or extreme. This is, uh, this is not very good stripping, but it doesn't really matter once it's soldered. It's okay, you can keep your hat on. Uh, we'll just melt the rest of that, it'll be right. Yeah. It'll be fine. Rich76, thanks for the five dollar, uh, the five euros. The five units of currency. <laughs> uh, the five Brussels. It's a, the, the, oh, Brussels. I was making a European Union yes, joke. Yes, not Brussels. Oh, Matt, the, oh God, this, this... I'm doing a really bad job of stripping these. Mm. Normally, I'm, normally, I, normally it goes better than this. Heckin' camera curse, man. Normally it goes better than this because you edit out all of the bits where it doesn't. Ah, so-so. <laughs> so-so. I had a very angry comment on uh, one of the Board Repair Basics videos the other day. It was on the voltage injection one, where a guy said that I should be ashamed and I should also be arrested. And he said, um, you know, oh, you, you prepared the board beforehand and you know exactly what's wrong with it. And I'm like... Yes, I said at the start of the video, I've sabotaged this board in order to demonstrate a technique. You know? <laughs> and I was just like, yes, I literally said in the video, this board is rigged. You know? <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> so, it was just... Yeah. It was what... Like, normally I don't... Uh, normally I don't respond to salty comments because I can't be bothered to engage with people like that because... Yeah. It, with with salty comments, no matter what you say, they're not going to be happy. That person's already decided that they're angry with you. And there's yeah. nothing you can say that will make them not angry with you. Do we need to go through these holes? 
What's the actual route this cable needs to take? Mm, let me, let me, again, hold on. Yeah. Uh, the route it takes is down there, around that post, over there, inside those Vs, and then up there. So it goes on the outside of all of this okay. and around the top. Yeah, so there. we don't need to go through those holes are yeah. for these for that post, oh, yeah. which is the case screw and that one which holds the motherboard in. Oh, okay. The logic the doodad. The, the main circuit board, the yeah. Do, the doodad, the mahiki thingy with the what's it and the buttons and the click click click. And the hey hey hey. Exactly. So yes, cool. so yeah, so I don't I don't actually route. need to do any routing. That, and I just, then that's yeah. like that, and then it roots like that. Cool. It just needs to go on. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to go down that direction. Yeah. Uh, yeah, because it has to come up there. Cool. As far as I can tell, because yep. otherwise you bash into that post. All I right. think. Now I need to know oh. what the pinout is going to be. So, uh, can someone remind me what the USB? Oh, yeah. Sorry. I just want to double check that it has to come up there. Yeah, it does because the board goes flat with those. Oh no, no! Like talking to my missus. Oof. <laughs> Oh, oh. Uh, let's see. Oh. Uh, Piero, oh. excuse yeah. me. I have a PSU that doesn't start because there isn't five volt on the green wire, and when I connect it to black wire, obviously it doesn't work. Hmm. Never seen that before. That sounds like you've got. I was going to say that's got to be five VSB, hasn't it? Oh. Yeah, I think I think you're missing five VSB, five volt standby, which comes from a little um, voltage regulator, doesn't it? Yeah, as opposed so to going through all the. I, yeah, because five VSB has v do, uh, well five. Yeah, five VSB has got some watts behind it. Yeah, like but yeah, five. Yeah, well, it powers the RGB in a lot of uh, systems. Yeah, um, as far as I'm aware, it's only got like five watts or something. Yeah, um, I'm I'm not I'm not great at diagnosing power supplies though, so I wouldn't know where to start with figuring out what's wrong with that. Um, but yeah, the base. I it's unless I'm mistaken, you're missing five VSB. So if it helps to tell you which rail you're missing, that's what rail you're missing. Yeah. But that's going to be, um, yeah. Um, but yeah, you got you, you'd need to take the power supply apart and figure out where the 5 VSB regulator is and start probing that. But like, man, that's going to be that's going to be work. Is this dead? Probably yes. Yeah. You might be better off using a different screwdriver to that one, but see how you get on. Uh, right, uh, I'm going to carry on doing this while while you attempt well, to open that up. Well, that was more of a test. Uh, yeah, yeah. The, uh, the, the secure screwdriver doesn't like big screws. Nope. Yeah. Not in the slightest. Yeah. The, uh, the YZH or a manual. Yeah, the YZH will probably pull those out. However, um, the uh, the secure smart screwdriver that, that appeared in one of my recent videos, I've been, um, I've been reviewing this guy. Very good for small screws, not very good for big screws. So yeah. And by big screws, that's only like PH1. Yes, big in computer terms. Uh, I guess. Yeah. I wouldn't particularly call PH1 large, but yeah. Yeah, I suppose. For laptops, it's large. True. Yeah, yeah. it's, it's Although, a laptop yeah. size screwdriver, basically. Yeah. That's right, yeah. Um Okay, right, yeah. I uh can someone sort me out with a um uh USB pinout, uh specifically with color order. Uh, it's. I think it's. Uh, what what colours have I got? I've got, I've got, black, red, white, green. So uh, black and red is going to be ground and five volts. Uh, what order is white and green going? Mr. Guru, thank you very. Yeah. That. Okay. So it's five volt data minus data plus. So what's the colour for data minus and data plus? I'm going to figure out which side is ground. All right. Uh, what's going to be ground? Oh, I was hoping I could easily spot the regulator in this one just to go. It's one of these. Yeah. But I cannot. All right. That's probably shield. Yeah, that's ground. So that's black. That's red. So that'll be D minus. That'll be D plus. Uh, white is data minus. Perfect. Uh, oh, sorry. I missed that, Sai. Red, white, green, black. Yeah, thanks, Sai. I didn't. I didn't look that far up the chat. <laughs> I didn't look an inch higher on the screen. <laughs> I did what my mother calls a boy look. Yes. Where was that from? Page. Yeah. Page yeah, yeah, that's right. Page said that in Slink Stream earlier on. Yeah. You need more of your little magnets. Um, I've got like eight of them. They're just spread around everywhere right now. Oh. 
Okay. Right, let's see if we can tweezer these into position. Right, that hole is not clear enough, so I'm gonna we're gonna just solder in live, I think. Yeah, alright. Let's go. We we're just gonna we're just gonna do it live. This is gonna be a heckin' masterpiece. And by a masterpiece I mean a mess. A masterpiece? I'll tin the wire as a special gonna, treat. It's gonna be a treat. Uh, hello, Solder and I. Please wake up. Charging. I kind of want them to have a little sound. So when they're charging, they just go... <laughs> well, Heiko's beep when they're up to temperature. Yeah, but that's not the silly charging noise. <laughs> yeah. Did you play much Doom 3? The reason why I say that... I'm not that, sure if I played none at all, or so little I've forgotten. Okay, because, well that answers that question then, because Doom 3, the plasma rifle, had the best reload noise ever. Because it was an energy weapon, the reload noise was like a capacitor noise, it was like boing! And it had the coolest charge noise ever. Like a camera flash charge, you, 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 it, it had a sort of a clank as you load in the, the new power cell, and it would go... Cushion I can't go high enough, but it was the coolest noise ever. What was the, um, there was a weapon that I remember that was like Unreal Tournament or Doom or something like that, mm. where you dropped in like blue balls into it. Yeah. And it charged up like the plasma gun. You dropped in like plasma balls into it. I uh, don't recall pla literal plasma balls. Or something, yeah. but yeah, I remember something like that. And I just remember that having a very satisfying kind of... Plunk. Yeah. Ka-chunk. Is Doom 3 the BFG one? Yeah, Doom 3 had a BFG. Yeah, had a BF... Um, however, the BFG has appeared in pretty much any Doom game. Um, because... It has to. Yeah, it's kind of obligatory. It's a requirement. Um, yeah. God, come off. Shock rifle. Oh, shock rifle life. That's... um. Uh, however, the shock rifle didn't take the blue balls, though, to my knowledge. At least not the one that I can think of. You didn't take mine. Oh dear. Um, <laughs> right, hang on a sec. I've forgotten the thing already. Uh, it was 5 volt D minus, so I need green next. Uh. Paradox is trying to reassemble the power supply that he briefly dis disassembled. Which is also dead, as far as we're all... As far as uh, we're all yes. Right. Therefore, is irrelevant. At, However, at the very least, I have zero intention of using it in anything. So, why? It's a power station. Yeah. What? Where's what, what that heckin' Novatech? Yeah. Apparently, those were very good in their day. However, also, it's probably about ten years old. I like that one of the options on it literally says oh, real, "real wattage," <laughs> as opposed to fake wattage. Yeah. I'm making a bit of a pig's ear of this, but it, I I didn't say it would be pretty. The requirement is functional. Yeah. You're not going to see any of this once it's all put back together again. In those wires. Man, we're, we're really going spider wires here. I kind of really like doing little repairs like this. Maybe not as jank as this, but oh, no. there's so many people who've probably thrown out gaming mice they really like because of a snapped cable like this. And I kind of wanted, I kind of want to have a thing of repairing these, but wow, Matt did, yeah. didn't he? Yeah, yeah. I think Matt, yeah, I think Matt threw out a, a, a mouse that he loved, and I was like, yo, I could have fixed that. It was a, it was a G9. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, Epic cancelled UT4. Yeah, Unreal Tournament kind of died because this, the the style of game went out of fashion. Because um, Unreal Tournament 3 didn't do very well, to my knowledge. I don't know anyone it else wasn't who very played it. good, from what the little I remember of it. It just wasn't very good. I liked it, it but it, felt... didn't, it didn't add anything to UT2004. Yeah, which wouldn't have been a problem. Mm. Well, 
I only played it two, maybe three times. It just didn't feel nice. Yeah. It felt stuttery and laggy and Yeah. It was just a bit eh. I was like, oh. Yeah. It's even I, I, ultra I smooth performance of UT. Yeah. Kind of it, thing. it that's the thing. It it handled like it was um um like it was Call of Duty or something like that. And I think that was because from around that period if you talk to any focus group, the focus group would be like, it needs to handle like Call of Duty mm. because Call of Duty was the de facto standard. So if your if your character movement, so that sort of that lumpy stepping that you get in Call of Duty, if your character didn't move in that way, then pe then the focus groups didn't like it. But the problem is, is the kind of people who play Unreal Tournament, they don't want that. They want they want to feel like they want to feel like they're on ice. Yeah. Because that's how Unreal Tournament feels. You glide in Unreal Tournament. There's no view, Bob. Yeah. Um. So um. So yeah. Uh. And I think that might be where UT three went wrong. Is it was it was trying to appeal to Call of Duty, which meant the kind of the actual core demographic of people who liked Unreal Tournament didn't like it, yeah. because they were like, if I wanted to, if I wanted it to feel like Call of Duty, I'd play Call of Duty. Yeah, exactly. Call of Duty is a thing and exists. Yeah. So I could play that. So yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, let's see. What am I powering the pine saw with? I'm powering it off a laptop power supply. I've got a 65 watt Toshiba charger plugged into this at the moment. Um, I do have a USB power delivery under the bench, um, but this wire is just plugged in in a convenient place. And the power supply that I have this, it, it's a laptop power supply that actually has a physical power switch on it. So it means it's really easy to switch off the power supply. Yeah, really, really rare. Um, but I just happen to have one, and I'm like, that's perfect for the soldering line. Yeah. Because uh, I think someone at some point asked me, how do you switch one of these off? And I'm like, ah. Uh, you pull the power out? You pull the pa Yeah, you pull the pa cable out. But obviously that's, then you've just got a power cable sitting around on your desk, which is kind of annoying. But as I say, I've got one that's actually got a physical clunking power switch on it, so it's kind of useful. That's not bad. Or of yep. course, with a lot of the um, like four or five gang extensions, that'll be per extension switch. Oh yeah, as well. yeah, that's a valid so option. You could do that. Yeah. If you mounted one of the like gang extensions. Yeah. Again, only if you're in the UK, apparently. Yeah. Do you, surely so the US have made the one. The US doesn't do that. Ah. Apparently, because according to the US, apparently having switches is silly. Yeah. Because you can just unplug your electronics, and I'm like, yes, but. That's disgusting, and I hate it, but also I don't care. I do? How dare you? Right, I'm going to strip a bit more off of that ground wire, just so I can actually thread that. I should have done this first, but this is where we live now. Oh dear. Good afternoon, Chris Kingan. Thank you for the $10. Hello there, gents. I oh. just now joined us actually buying a new car today. Buying a new car? Oh, rad. What's up, Chris Kingan? How you doing? What car did you get? If you don't yes. mind us asking. Dish, dish, dish. <laughs> what car did you buy? I bought a dish. <laughs> it's just a ball. <laughs> it doesn't function very well as a car. <laughs> yeah. It's excellent for salsa. <laughs> this is the quality content that people have come here for. And this is exactly why you should all become channel members. <laughs> Right, I've just cut back a bit of that shielding wire and it's still way too thick to actually thread into that hole. I might just solder blob it and have and, and have a lot of angry people in the comments going, you can't do that! And I'd be like, watch me. <laughs> uh, I wired up power on a data line. Are you sure? Uh, the, the, the pin out that I'm opting for here... Uh, Focus. The pinout that I'm opting for here is five volt, D minus, D plus, ground, shield. That's the pinout that I'm opting for oh, here. Apparently, it's not your standard USB layout. Oh, gross. Why would they do that? It's green, white, red, ground, shield. Oh, okay. Why? Yeah. What's your, what's your source on that? Because I don't understand why they would do that. Swap green and red. Uh, yeah, how so we might be able to figure that out by looking at the board, actually. Hold up. 
Let me just unvoice this. I know that the black is in the right place because the right two pins are shorted together. And I, ooh, I tell you what, there's two, there's two pads there, which I think are both going to the data pins. So that's probably going to be the giveaway because those are obviously, those are obviously debugging pads or like bed of nails testing or something like that. So if we buzz those out, that's probably going to settle this. You have one taken apart previously. Hmm. Okay. That's one. <laughs> I disagree because these two pads here, those are obviously, those have got to be data test pins and they're both going to the center pins. It doesn't make sense to have one of them be a data pin and the other one be a power pin. That doesn't make that doesn't make any logical sense. So I think this one's different. A Kia Soul. Oh, fair enough. So yeah. I'm I'm gonna stick with what we've got, but what we'll do is we can we can test this though. We'll 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 test it on something unimportant. And USB is very forgiving. If you get something catastrophically wrong with USB, you almost certainly won't blow anything up. It just won't work. So um so yeah. Uh, we're fixing a mouse, Homer J. Simpson. Welcome on in. The Logitech G5. Yes. But the one with the two side buttons, not the one side button. Yeah. I might... Um, uh, right, I'm just going to touch up these pads from this side, just so there's a slightly better join there. Please don't pop out. That's going very well. It's better. Uh, I might just not bother connecting up the shield because it's not in, it's not required anyway. Mm. And that shield wire is going to be an absolute bastard to actually connect up. Uh, unless I go back, unless I solder blob it like I intended to. Yeah. Uh, I mean that feels better because it won't be flapping. Uh, well, I'll I'll trim it back. Oh, I see. Yeah. I'm, in fact, I'm going to do that. I'm going to trim that back and not bother. It's not required for anything. It's just a, a shield wire for um, uh, for shield grounding to reduce uh, vulnerability to ESD and other things that it's not going to matter because it's a hecking mouse. I'm going to go with that. I think we should plug this in and see what happens. Right. What Does, does this need anything else to work? It doesn't need that. It doesn't need that. We could those, plug... are, those are just the LEDs there. Yeah. We we sh Step if we back. plug this in, it should track. So yeah, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna go for the test. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna go for the test. Um, so, oh yeah, that's the side buttons. That yeah, in. I don't actually think we need it. We don't need it to be in the case to actually do anything. So let me just move the soldering iron out of the way. Test and then hot glue. Yeah, that was the intention. I'll hot glue that down for, um, for it. Uh, let's see. Is it a bit late to a bit late to read this? Maybe. Uh, how much time should I wait to let the four hundred cap discharge in a power supply? Ooh, I'm not sure. Is the answer Quite to that? As long as you think. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. Is the answer to that? Uh, I don't want to give an answer to that because I don't know, and I don't want to give bad advice when it's a four hundred volt mains cap. So yeah, five volt and data line not not so good. Yeah, you you reckon I'm wrong? I don't think. Well, that's the thing. Answer my yeah. You answer my question then about you know what are those test pads if they're not data pins? It doesn't make any logical sense for those to be anything other than data pins. Just going to trim those back a bit. I mean, you might be right, but it makes no sense. Mm -hmm. Um. Let me have one more look at this. What is this thing? It's a mouse. All right, let's go in for extreme close up. Yeah. So. So uh, where's my tweezers gone? Ugh. So these two random pads here and here. 
those two pads are both going to the pins that I've wired the data lines onto. And then we've got five volts on the end and we've got black and ground over here. So those pads going to the middle ones, there's no reason for them to be anything other than data. It doesn't make sense for them to be anything else. Uh, VCC and ground can be tested to the largest SMD cap. That's a good shout. I agree with that. Yeah. So, um, so yeah. Uh, let's try that. Have we got any big... Uh, there's a couple of big caps on this thing. Have we got an input cap anywhere? Looks like all the caps are on this side. We could check something like C5. Yeah, let's do that. Let's take a couple of pot shots and see if we get any. Because um, if, if we test that, if we test some of the big caps and we get and we get confirmation, then that answers the question. Ooh, one, two, three, four. There we go. Eh, eh, eh. There we go. Right, that's our ground. Yeah. Hello. There we go. That's ground. Ooh, you might. I tell you what. I tell you what. You might be right. Unless that is sitting on a data line. And I don't see why you'd have a big ass cap on a data line like that. Which one did we decide was D plus? It's green, isn't it? Well, that's on the D plus line, so it might be filtering the D plus line. But then, no, you wouldn't do that, I don't think. Hmm. Wouldn't you expect one for the other line, data line as well, if you were? If they were filters, wouldn't you expect it on the other data line as yeah. well? Yeah. That's really hard to judge. Yeah, because as I say, I still say that it makes no sense for those test pads not to be data pads. It's a shame we don't have the original connector, because that would show us. Yeah, switch D plus and 5 volts. Well, that seems to be what we're seeing here, because, yeah, that's that's what Bill is saying. Um, and I have to admit, based on that cap test, that does seem to be what we're seeing here. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, red and green are the wrong, wrong way around. Yeah. Yeah. No, I tell you what, after doing that test, I agree. I, I think red and green are the wrong way around. Yeah, I agree with that. I still I still think those data pads don't make any sense in that configuration. However, that's a big capacitor, and it makes sense for that capacitor to be across the 5 volt and ground lines. So, yeah. Yep, all right. Red and green. We're swapping them over. <clears throat> it's going to make this even harder. How are we doing for time? Oh, no. Two and a half hours. Oh, oh well. We'll be done in three hours. We've got half an hour to fix this. I'm, I'm setting a deadline. No more long streams, he says. Two hours tops, he said. On the other hand, there's lots of people that do say they like the long ones. So, uh, I don't know. Take that as you will. Yeah. <clears throat> I, on that basis, are going to put the coffee machine on. Uh, yes. Okay, thank you. I've made a bit of a pig's ear of these wires. They're not very nice, but we're not we're not we're not going for style here. I somehow read the brand on the power bank behind me with Nintendo and was very confused. Yeah. Green and red. I'm gonna pull all of this out, trim it all back, and start again. Because I hate these wires. Whoop. Right, so we're going for we're going for green, white, red, black. Green, white, red, black. Someone write that down.
Do, do, do. You like the long ones? As long as it's interesting. It, it was not shorted out, no. It was not shorted out. Uh, I'm going to trim back a load of this. I'm still going to ditch the shield because we don't need the shield. Pull back this foil. What time is it? Oh, it's 20 past six. That's why I'm getting hungry. I might break open. A, we've got a we've got a packet of hobnobs as well, which I might break. Yeah, which I might break open. Get some nice long wires out. There we go. Right. Let's trim all of those off. Right. I'm not going to try and strip these under the under the camera now because that's why I made such a hash of it the first time round. That's the wrong one. There we go. I'll twist that to one side a second, actually just sit and do this by hand. All right, let's see if the strippers can do it first. We've got a good friend from Great Britain, and this is exactly what he loves, hobnobs. Hobnobs are the best biscuit. I'll, uh, I'll fight to the death over that. Ah, the strippers don't go small enough. That one's gone horribly wrong. Saved it though. Right, I'm getting some cleaner wires off of this now. These British people oh, from London. Look on pick stump. All right, hold up. Uh, rest restorated a Logitech G5. Oh, rad. Cool. I'm not going to click on that link right now because it's going to ruin my picture layout. However, I take it that confirms the pinout that we're... Uh, I take it that um, that link confirms the pinout that we've agreed on. Because as a reminder to everyone, we were missing the original JST connector. So we don't know, we, we couldn't see what the original wiring was. Come on, last one. That'll do. All right. Wire stripping complete. All right, let's get back in there. Do do do. Should have used through hole solder pins. That's not a bad idea. Yeah, I don't think I've got anything small enough for that, but you're right, it would have made the job easier. We're going to get there in the end, though. HDMI 2, that's the wrong one. Bench cam, that's what I wanted. Right, that's position. And focus. Uh, I know so much about IT. Hobby is... I, I have had some education, but... Mo like 99% of my knowledge of computers is self-taught. Um, uh, it, it's what was that? What was that saying from Bob Ross? Um, talent is uh, applied interest. Um, if you're interested in something and you practice and you learn about it, you get good at it. And at this point, I will quickly remind people that I'm not the best by any stretch of the imagination, as per why I'm making such a hash up of this, but. The thing is, is uh, oh, that's Caradog making the noises. Um, it, it's easy. Uh, it's easy to watch me making a hash up of this, but it's a case of if you don't practice, then how do you get better? So that's why I kind of like doing this because we can sit and work on it and go, 
haha, okay, we're getting better at this. We didn't do a very good job here, but the next one will be better, you know? So, yeah. Uh, don't tin the wires. Just push them in the solder. The problem is the holes aren't clear. Um, or actually, you know what? Should we do something about that? I might get the desoldering gun out and actually clear these holes. Because the problem is, because the holes aren't clear, I'm never going to be able to push wires through there. That's the issue. I will try and clear the so I'll try and clear the holes. Let me grab the desoldering gun. I think this is too small for the desoldering gun, but I'll give it a go. Ugh. Caradoc's phone is blowing up in the kitchen. I can just hear it making all kinds of noises. Right. Huh? Hi. I'm just calling it now that at some point I'm going to accidentally touch the butt, the trigger on the desoldering gun and it will go Burr! and it will make me jump and I'll go oh! so just when that happens just saying I called it let's, let's hush you <laughs> mom I'm in the middle of a show no no it wasn't my mother <laughs> My mum and my sister will call me when they know I'm streaming. I'll be like, is, is it quick? Because, you know, I'm in the middle of a live stream right now. And they're like, oh, I, I knew you probably would be. And I'm like, so why are you calling me? You know? Wow. All right. I think... I think as well is the fact of the thing that's most annoying is obviously with this working from home and so on. I've had some meetings I've been doing from home and like I will be in a meeting. I will ah, be sorry. <laughs> Thanks. I'll be in a meeting mm. and then someone will try and have a conversation with me whilst I'm in a meeting and I'm like what what part yeah. of me being in a meeting that I told you I was going to be in thought that you could talk to me yeah whilst I was in the meeting yeah. And it's not even like, can I have your car key? Someone's about to crush your car. Yeah. Because I can understand interrupting yeah. a meeting for something like that. It's like, oh, what do you like for dinner? I don't know. I'm in the middle of the meeting. <laughs> why, why are you here? Go away. Yeah. <laughs> and it's just like, this is this is not the time. Or like, you know, oh, did you did you get that film that we were talking about? I don't know. Yeah. I'm in a meeting. <laughs> that was not the time. Mm. Yeah, it's not like I'm going to be here for the next twenty three <laughs> hours. Yeah, at home, not leaving because I'm working from home today. What? I don't know. Uh... All right, desoldering gun, go. Ah! <laughs> Yeah, no, it's not getting there. My my technique with the desoldering gun isn't very good. However, I think this, the nozzle on this guy is a bit too big for this work. Oh, that's also not stable. Let me just try and re revise this just so I can press a bit harder and get a better seal. Makes a noise like a goat. Ah. Oh, that got it. Yeah, this is working now. Mm. I've had surprisingly little practice with this desoldering gun because um, I don't use it very often. Mainly just because the, the actual thing that I bought it for doing uh, was removing DC jacks and stuff like that. But just as I finally invested in this, I just stopped seeing DC jacks hard soldered to any computers. So, you know, I bought it and then immediately no longer needed it. However, and like a lot of the time, most holes, you know, you could just run the wick across them and they clear up. Um, so, yeah, it is very cool when it works, though. 
I feel though it's like 75, 80% of tools. They're there for that single job a year. Yeah, they're very situational. That like single job or maybe two jobs a year where it just could, nothing else is working on it. You can't do it. And it's not explicitly designed for this job, but it gets it done and it gets it sorted. Yeah, those holes are now completely clear. Yeah. Completely clean. Completely. Yes. Oh, it just makes me feel the think of the, the advert for was it sugar free gummy bears? The 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 warning on Amazon. Was it the fiber bars green text? I can't remember. I have no idea what you're talking about. Um, the, the, it, 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 it just finished with um completely clean. Hmm. Fair enough. I think it was green text. Uh, remember when 4chan was good? Or did we just grow out of it? I don't know. I, I never frequented 4chan. I've, I've been there on occasions for, for various things, but I was I was never a regular. Actually, let's try and thread all of these up first and then do them. Right. One. Uh, right. One. Uh, uh, uh. Two. Uh, um, uh, uh. Oh, bag. White, green... Green, white, red, black shield. Thank you. Wasn't it? Green, white, red, black. Someone confirm this because my because I've got a memory like a sieve when I'm on camera. Get in there. There we go. Right, someone confirm that colour order is correct. Right, Bill says yes. Yeah. Green, white, red, black. Green, white, red, black shield. Excellent. Except there's no shield because I cut it off. <laughs> there will be no shielding. Isk. Yes. Get your Icelandic cro yeah. corona. If, if you run corona. this cable between buildings, you might get an electric shock from it. However, thankfully, it's only a meter long, so you won't. Yes. <laughs> uh, that was a thing I kind of wanted. Was um, mice with, like, maybe 20 centimeter long cables. Or like an option for them for you know pairing with keyboards with USB hubs. Yeah, that's what Apple did. Yeah. Yeah. But then I was like, it makes it completely useless for anything else. Yeah. Yeah. Apple mice always have like fifty centimeter cables for that exact reason. Yeah. Right. I'm just gonna touch those up because I did that mostly blind. Oh bloody hell. Uh, where's the not crap trimmers? They're over there. There we go. Oh. oh, I just dropped those, so these are probably crap trimmers as well now. Hooray! <laughs> it's a good job you keep three or four pairs in stock, right? Uh, may need to swap green or white if it doesn't work. Green is usually next to red. Hmm. Yeah, might be using it as a common ground. Uh, the zero volt and the shield are tied together on the board. Someone was saying about they looked up a replacement cable on AliExpress. Oh. I was thinking that that was... That would have been a lot easier. <laughs> but where's the fun in that, man? It's kind of hard to do a, you know, a hour and a half long segment on the stream for that. Maybe. Well, yeah. just plugging in a cable. Oh, well, no. I mean, I, I guess it begs the question of does the existence of that cable make this a waste of time kind of thing? Um, but it's, it, yeah, I don't know, man. These streams are not necessarily about what we're doing. We're just talking and talking tech while we do something at the same time kind of thing. You know, this is supposed to be a spectacle while we talk tech or something because just two talking heads is boring, maybe. I don't know. Absolutely. Like, chime in and if you guys have got opinions on this because that's the thing is... This, this show is not really structured, and it's whatever you guys want it to be, I guess. Less e-waste. Yeah, I suppose. Yes. Uh, it's defo green, white, red, black. Looking at the overclockers link. Green, white, red, black. Well, that's what we've got at the moment, so that's yeah. what we're going with. Right, that is soldered in. Excellent. And I've got no bridges, so I'm going to plug this in. And I'm going to go absolute mad lad, and I'm going to plug it into my laptop. 
refreshing to hear two tech guys not talking about GPUs. Funny you should mention GPUs. We got sick of the We're subject. Done. Yeah. We're done. We got sick of the subject because just every week it was coming up. People were just like, oh, you got any, have you found a good place to buy GPUs? And we're just like, no. Yeah. You know, and it's just, there, there's only so much, there's only so many times you can talk about it before it's just, uh, yeah. I don't know, man. Although, as much, I, I hate to bring up the top, well, I, I say bring up, I hate to go to that topic now we've mentioned it. However, uh, I was watching a uh, WAN show earlier on today, and apparently the 1070 Ti Founders Edition doesn't exist. Or rather, apparently, like, they, um, it, it, it's possible that they only made, like, a hundred of them or something like that, because no one can follow, like, all of the scalpers and all the people oh, who the run the box. Oh, the 3070. The 3070 Ti. You said 1070. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Which was my yeah. blank expression. Yeah, you were you were giving me that look of the guy from 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 Inception when Leonardo DiCaprio was, like, in the in the cafe. Anyway, um, yeah, the, the 3070 Ti, um, no one can find any evidence that it was actually available for sale. Yeah, like the the clo on the WAN show, the closest they could find was one website that said they'd sold nine. Scan sold them. Scan had stock yesterday at ten oh one a.m. Uh, yeah, apparently, but like, do we know how many? Because I reckon there were like ten. Probably, but yeah. Scan had stock yeah. yesterday. But that that's the thing is this this is we the don't know how many. Yeah. But yeah, this is the allegation is that apparently there was just a handful. And that the, there is a, a minute possibility we might be able to find out. Yeah, apparently there was just a handful, and past that they just don't exist. Mm -hmm. Yeah, apparently it was a complete paper launch. Um, and yeah, it's lots of speculation as to why that might be, but yeah, it, it's kind of I, that I thought was kind of interesting, um, just because like a lot of people were speculating that um, that Nvidia possibly did this because of backlash or something like that, and it's like. The existence of the 3070 Ti is already made that backlash. It's too late now. Is the 30... But, yeah. um, someone in the audience, hopefully, will be mm. able to say, which core is the 3070 Ti using? It's the same as the 3070. Is it the 3070 core? Yeah, it's the 3070 core. I think it's a cherry-picked 3070. So um, is it purely... So it's purely it, higher clocks? Uh, oh, no, sorry. It's got some extra units on it and stuff like that. So it might have been a Shave 3080 core. Yeah, because I was going to say, you would have had yeah. to have the full GPU die, the, the, the G106, yeah, which is, so it's the it's the 106, which is what the 3070 was. Huh, that's odd, because I would yeah. have expected it to have been, uh, oh, I guess, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yes, in the meantime, the moment of truth. Right, if my laptop cuts out or blows up, then you guys will see it live. Only here on Two Guys Talk Tech for YouTube Stats. The web show. The web show. I couldn't remember the last bit. <laughs> couldn't remember the name of our own show because we deliberately gave it a ridiculous name. Yes. Right. Ah. Aha, we're setting up USB gaming mouse. Yay. And it works. All right, I'm on set. Oh yeah, you can just about see the mouse pointer. Uh, let me give you guys a close up. It is. It is. Yeah. And we go. There we go. Hop success. So, firstly, try and click. Uh, try and click. Uh, right click. Right click. Right click. Click. Oh no, those are the. That's the right click. There we go. There we go. Yeah, though, uh, why is all oh, those are like left and right um, on, scrolls? On the scroll wheel. Yeah, yeah, the scroll wheel left and right. Yeah. Uh, those are the, the jog. Yeah. The jogs. Good. Excellent. So, uh, firstly, full credit to Bill for uh, being right the whole time. Uh, you now have permission to say, I told you so. <laughs> hmm. Let's thread this. Glue it, glue it, glue case. it. Yeah, I agree. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hot snot those, those wire oh, connections on, first. On, the, on there. Yeah. Oh, okay. So uh, let me just get that laptop out of the way, and I'll just grab the hot glue gun. Ugh. Will you be able to find it? Uh, yes, I know exactly where it is. There is some organisation here, believe it or not. Let's pull that 
zoom back out again. I've, ru I've ruined this forever because I adjusted the angle. Oh my god. What is this? Eh? Hello. Right, there we go. That's what I'm going with. Uh, right. Hot glue gun! Good afternoon. Time to channel the electronics repair school of using hot glue guns. Is it hot glue with glitter? It can be. Do you want it to be? Not overly, but I just feel like that needs to be the arts and crafts. Did someone, did someone say that or did you say that? No, 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 that was me. That was okay. all me. Yeah, because I was going to say, um, you know, hot, hot glue with glitter is an option. Um, Good. Well, see, the thing oh, you I can just put, I should oh. put it under that. I was going to say, the thing you can do, because the autofocus works, is literally yeah. just do but, but that. This is why we have the, this is see, why the bench see, cam exists. Look, 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 look how close I am. I can almost touch it. This is why we have the bench cam, though. This is the point of it. There we go. We've got, we could use glitter glue sticks. That's a thing that we could use. For everyday gluing projects. I hate glitter. <laughs> I hate fun. <laughs> <laughs> no. I know that's all she said, but. No. Stop. <laughs> Don't put things in people's mouths. <laughs> anyway. Glitter. <laughs> uh, it's the herpy of herpes of the arts and crafts world. It gets, it gets everywhere. everywhere. I don't like glitter. It's coarse and rough and it gets it everywhere. <laughs> yep, absolutely. For all your repairs, you use dark blue hot glue. I need to re-hot glue the SATA connector on that hard drive. Uh, we haven't again, or did yes, we do again. that recently? No. Did we do that recently? Uh, you told me about that recently. I just don't know if we yeah. actually ended up doing it or not. No, we haven't again. We did it once. Yeah, yeah, we haven't done the original it the time. time we though. haven't yeah. done it the second time. So yeah. Fair enough. Um, so yes, so it needs mm. it needs redoing because is glitter it's conductive? Glitter. That's a very good point, actually. The I glitter no might it, isn't it just shiny plastic? I would imagine it's plastic glitter rather than metal glitter. Yeah, I can't imagine that it's literal foil. Because surely plastic is cheaper to make. I don't know. Yeah. Um. That's my arm. Mm. Saw a motherboard hot snotted into a case it didn't fit. Oof. Yeah. I need to do that just to annoy Graham. Ah. <laughs> uh, you, well, you need to do that with an ATX motherboard in an ATX case. Yes. Just so it's a fact of yes. you could have screwed it in. Yes. It would have been completely fine to be yes. screwed in. Absolutely. But you you made a conscious decision to heart snot it. Yes. It also needs to be like an X570 Master or something. <laughs> Specifically your X570 Master. And then just for the sake of it, just make a big old puddle of hot glue on the back of the motherboard and spread it clean with a spreader for waterproofing for when you put it on your chiller again. You know what? It's not a bad <laughs> idea. Yeah. I, I want to get the um. You know, you can get that like paint on rubber. No, but sure. Yeah, I can imagine so. You can get like paint on rubber. Stuff. Yeah. Um, I really want to get that and just coat like an A five twenty board in it. Hmm. And just be like, this is absolutely what we use A five twenty for <laughs> sub ambient cooling. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I mean, I haven't been watching them, but um, uh, actually, hardcore overclocking, you know, Buildzoid, he's been doing some mad lads with mad lad stuff with uh, cat modding yeah. on low end boards recently, unless I'm mistaken. Is he trying to make monster overclocking boards out of low end stuff? I think he's also just kind of proving what they do. Yeah, I haven't actually seen the current stuff because I missed. Um, I like not paid attention to his channel for maybe a month. So I should probably get in on that, but yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> but yes, I've been watching his um, hardware bot roundups and just kind of some of the categories and stuff. And now I'm just like, huh, yeah, I guess this is valid. What? How so? Like, like overclocking, like locked processors and like max BCLK numbers and things like that. Oh, interesting. Like, it's like completely not just yeah. ha who can run times by the fastest. Yeah. Yeah, I do like, um, I do like Buildzoid for being like 
Now and then, he, he often deals in high-end stuff, but when you actually say, sort of, oh, you know, is this a good motherboard, he will actually look at it in the context of what that motherboard is designed for, effectively. He, yeah, he'll um, give two answers. Yeah. He'll give the answer of, no, it's not, because it's not an extreme overclocking board, yeah. because this, but also a case of, it's a good board because it's £75. Yeah. If that makes sense. That's right. He will give both answers so you can judge it on that mm. spectrum that you're looking at it at. Tidy it's up like, the braiding. I'm not sure how to tidy up the braiding. Well, you see, you hold it together like that and you cover it in glue. Really? Well, because then it stops it fraying. Yeah. I might get... Um, or get a pair of scissors. I might get a bit of tape and just run some tape around it. Um, or uh, I wonder if I'm going to try something here uh, with the soldering iron that's got the ruined tip on it. I'm just going to see if I hold a soldering iron to it, if it just melts like heat shrink. Uh, maybe. Because that, that, that would be ideal, is uh, if I can just melt it just so it stops fraying. Edge of soldering iron. Yeah. Uh, I'm not going to use the heat gun because I don't want to get close to everything else. Although, well, I could get the heat gun in there, actually. That might be a better option. Uh, we'll... Um... The quick's unplugged. Yeah, the so quick is unplugged. In here. Yeah. Um, I don't really want to do that right now, so I'm going to use the edge of the soldering iron. Here we go. Here we go. Uh, uh... Hold your breath, Caradog. Uh, uh, uh... Uh, uh, this isn't going very well. Uh, 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 uh. Well, well, it's not frayed anymore. Mm. I'm, I'm not sure that was really the best way to deal with that. But it's not frayed anymore. <laughs> yeah. What about we got a cracking screenshot earlier on when we were messing around with the camera and we 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 were doing capture and we got a really artifacty capture. I'm going to share a screen grab with you guys. Uh, let's image. see image. Yep. Um, create new image. Browse. Uh, raw. Mood. Mood. P this this file is called mood. Png. So yeah, that, that happened earlier on. So that was a thing. <laughs> so that is also an option. Uh, right, how did that come out? Well, about as well as you would expect a soldering iron to some braid to come out. However, the braid is no longer frayed. So to that, I'm calling that a victory. We have hot-snotted that. Right, are you doing the assembly? I will certainly attempt to. There we go. Caradog is assembling. Right, I want that to go over there. Sorry, do your magic. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I could have used heat shrink if I put it on before soldering. Yeah, the thought occurred to me. It's just a bit late for that now. I just hold that. Mm. Uh, hockey tape. Yes, I found my hockey tape, by the way. Too late to use it on anything that we planned on using it, but I have discovered, I have found it again. Think of the VMU and just leave it. No. Yeah, you're probably right. The meh. Yeah. <laughs> Two guys punish e-waste. Hey, look, this this mouse works now. It's not e-waste anymore. Oh, oh, we have the path wrong. We have fully fixed this. How, many, how did he manage it's to a, rip that? It, it's now a fully operational battle star station. <laughs> You didn't say it right. It should be, this is now a fully operational battle station. Should we hot snot in there? Uh, yeah, sure. And also, that's a good question. I wonder how this came off in the first place, because that's a long cable route. Like, I'm amazed that that fatigued. The way it came off was mm. I snapped the cable. Yeah. And then I unscrewed it to see what was inside. Oh, and that's I, why the original uh, connector was missing. And then I gave you the original connector and this frayed cable. And now the original connector is nowhere to be found. Yes. So what you're saying is you lost the original connector. <laughs> I don't believe those were the words I used. <laughs> um, okay. There you go. The original connector is probably on that bench somewhere. Uh, the, it's, it is reheating. We are re-hotting. We're re-hotting, bro. 
the rehotting. What I've realised you could do with on this is having mm. coloured dots. Oh, so we know when we're in frame. That would actually and then be really. Line the camera up so you yeah. could like line up here. That would be like really handy going forward. Yeah, back in back in the old days of the channel, when I used to have, um, when I used to use uh, a, either an iPhone or this same camcorder on some of my recordings, that would be mm. off to the side looking down. Um, so the the early the early recordings used to be at this angle, and back then I actually. Oh, hi. Um, back then, I actually had some electrical tape on taped to the desk in a specific spot, so I knew where the edge of the camera would align to. So I could align the camera to exactly the same spot every time, and I would know when I've gone off shot. So yeah, it would actually be a good idea to um, uh, do a similar thing and put some uh, some tape on this on this bench. So when we're doing this in the future, we know where the camera shot is. Eh, that'll do. Michael Casper, thank you very much for the two dollars, my dude. Much appreciated. Ah. I'm just making sure that's actually nested. Fair enough. Do you want the do you want the honours of hot snotting? Sure. It's probably not it's probably incredibly awkward for you to use. There we go. And I would try and push it in there a bit with the tip of the gun. Yeah. I'll probably do it at any rate. Thank you. It's new. I like this hot glue gun. It's got a, having the switch on the side is actually really handy. Um, let's see. What was all the worry about? The bad bits hidden in the case. Yeah, absolutely. I think it was more just because it was annoying people. But that's also why I really didn't care about doing a clean job of it, because it's gonna be in there anyway. Uh, this one has weights as well. We've got a little weight pack here that goes in it, which is kind of cool. I, I don't know. I think you've got to be a little bit of an anal person to actually care that much about the weight of your mouse. However, I do like heavy mice because I'm used to wireless mice, which are generally tend to be heavier anyway because batteries. What was wrong with what I just said? What I'm I, like, I. Having having an adjustable weight mouse is good. I just don't need 4.5 gram increments, is what I meant. Oh no, don't worry. It's not just 4.5 gram. You can also have 2.7. Yeah, because ab absolutely, you know, I, I tend to pick up a mouse and be like, this needs to be 2.7 grams heavier. It's just not quite there, you know? Oh, what, what, do, 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 would you worry? Hey? Does this work? Heat gun is the pathway to many repair opportunities that some would consider to be unnatural. <laughs> yeah. 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 Heat, gun, heat guns can be really situational as well. I know a lot of people who are interested in getting into board repair and stuff like that, but a hot air station, like a, a hot air station that's worth buying is going to set you back 60, plus, 60 quid plus or $100 or so, you know, and it's it's a bit of a commitment to something that's really situational. Like I I don't use mine that often. I only use mine once a week. But when you need it, you need it. You know, as per our conversation about tools in general, so many tools are very situational. Good. Mm. Good. Yes. Hey. Are, are you winning, son? Are these all the same? I don't know. Probably. Where did these little ones come from? I don't know where they came from. Are yeah. you certain they came from this and weren't just on the bench? No, I no. I pull them out. Yeah. I don't think that goes in there because it's not going in. Oh, in that case, it probably might be these then. No, it was those oh. four. Oh, OK, yeah. Oh, well, I'll let you fiddle with that. Oh, oh, oh. Back in the day, a well, a rework station was over a grand. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Quick have done an amazing job of making good hot air stations affordable now. Um, but yeah, and that's also why I'm, I'm a massive supporter of these electronic irons like the, the Pine 64 and stuff like that. Because these electronic soldering irons, they make decent adjustable soldering irons so cheap and affordable with good tips in them. You know, like the, again, the price of the Pine 64 Pine Sill is mind-blowing. If you're starting out and you want a soldering iron, this is 
this is you know like just the pint the pine saw just buy a pine saw you know there's literally no reason to get anything other than a pine saw yeah that's mm. it's cheap two in one stations are best i wouldn't say they're the best however i started with the two in one station um i've got uh, like if you go back by like four or five years on my channel to when i did my my web two in one station review I've still got that station, and it it did actually do me proud, but the soldering iron on it isn't very good. The soldering iron on it is really bad. Have you got a smaller one? A small screwdriver? Yeah, yeah hang on a sec. So I need to get in at a bad angle because I forgot, uh, okay, yeah. I forgot the order. Uh, is that P0? That's a P00. That might be too small. Um, let me find my P0. <laughs> Oh, my P0's got walkabout. I don't know where it is. Just like everything else. Everyone, everyone, everyone betray me. I'm fed up with this wild. No, that has to go in first. There is no way of doing that. Oh, God, that's cold. Another thing I got recently from Pine64 is, uh, I bought one of the, uh, one of their other, um, our delivery ones as well. Oh, is that the little gallon yeah, nitro one? That's right. This is the um the Pine 64 Pine Power 65 watt gallium nitride power adapter. And uh so this is a 65 watt power delivery. I'm gonna turn this camera around. I tried this angle, it doesn't make any sense to anyone. There we go. That's a camera angle that makes sense. So yeah, um, 65 watt power delivery and it's got dual type c power delivery outputs and a usb a on it um which is really cool do they say what it's actually rated for like how much you can actually pull through it you know i don't know it says on the side though let's see um single type c output 65 watts max single type a output 60 watts max oh wow oh yeah the type a output is power delivery as well Oh, wow. this is rad. It's actually got the combinational outputs on it on the side as well. Just so you guys can see what I'm reading from here, this text on the side of it has got all the actual outputs. So uh, C1 plus 2, what do you need? Well, no, it's just a oh, case you're just of... comparing. So does that. Oh, yeah. Uh... Oh, yeah, well, or, well, oh, no, sorry. I'm not just having the outputs, but, like, if you look on the side here, it's got C plus one and C and C C one and C two. So it shows you what you oh, can use at the same time. Oh, it, that's what you mean. Yeah. Right. So it shows what outputs you can use at the same time and get what output. So yeah, um you can do if you use both the type C outputs, you get eighteen on one and sixty-three on the other. And if you use um a type C and the type A you get 18 watts on the type A and 63 on the type C. And if you use all of them at the same time, you get 15 on a type A and a type C and 60 on the other. So it basically, if you use the, some of the outputs at the same time, it downscales them. But it does so in a sensible way. So you could run, like you could be, you could be running a laptop you could be charging a laptop off one of the type C's and charge your phone off the other type C at the same time. So it's useful combinations. So that's cool. All works. So yeah. So I've got I've also got the Pine Power desktop as well. But um uh this is um the Pine Power desktop is good for technical stuff, but this is actually a more functional device. Um, depending on what you need. The, the the desktop has got more outputs, but that has got more uh utility. Oh my god, eventually. Eventually. Oh yeah, sorry. My bad. Does that have... Uh, I'll let you carry on, actually. So yeah, uh, Pine64 shipping is slow and the tracking sucks. Yeah, I think that's the case because um, they use low priority shipping. Um, because sometimes your stuff will come along, th will come through really quickly and sometimes it won't. And Basically, they they use low priority shipping, so they fill up a, they fill up the boat, and if there's a gap on on a pallet somewhere when the boat is about to go out, they'll chuck a Pine sixty four box in there. Basically, so you might get it you might get it in a week, you might get it in a month. Who knows? 
but it's it for the for the price you pay it's fantastic are you protecting are you recommending the pine over the ts100 um yeah it's certainly if, for price yeah if you don't have either soldering iron like if you're looking at soldering irons and you're like should i get a ts100 or a pine soul i recommend the pine soul however if you already have a ts100 update the firmware to the Rallink. Rallink? right rail what's the name of the firmware again update this to the same firmware and you will have something that is just as good as the pine soul so if you already have a ts100 don't worry, you're fine, stick with it. If you don't have a soldering iron, get a pine saw, basically. Pine saw and hacko tips. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. And uh, the SQ001. Yeah, the SQ001, that's a secure as well. I'm surprised that Secure didn't ask me to review one of those, actually, because they sent me their electric screwdriver. And um, I know 12 volt vids recently got one at the SQ001 oh, for review. Oh, no. <laughs> Have you done something in the wrong order again? Oh, no, fine. I thought we'd lost part of the mouse. Oh, no. Good. But it was attached to the scroll wheel. Yeah. I was looking for something to click into the scroll wheel there to then yeah. go on to that i had completely missed yeah what does caradog do work wise he works in an office that's it that's all you'll ever know <laughs> indeed caradog is a mystery man he does not exist and by an office i mean he just he lives in the back room of the shop absolutely at the end of the stream he's going to walk through that door and he won't come back out again until next saturday <laughs> For some reason, that bit of plastic was connected on there. And I'm like, I don't know what function you serve. Uh, is that a diffuser for the LEDs? But the LEDs are there. Oh, it yeah. It goes there, and the LEDs shine through there. So I'm like, goodbye. Hmm. You are irrelevant. Yeah. No, don't, I, can't, I can't understand that either. Uh... Uh, nearly bought a pine saw, but got put off with the $30 shipping. Yeah. Um, the Pine 60, yeah, the, sh the shipping is expensive. It works out better when you buy a couple of things at the same time from the Pine store. And you kind of got to buy, you kind of got to buy, um, buy a selection of things at the same time, and then it gets super cheap. Uh, so it's good if you can find a mate who wants some stuff as well. Long stream. Yeah, oh no, we're past the three hour marker. We're so close to the end though, we'll see it through. Oh boy. Damn it. However, Caradog is now understanding the wonders of doing it live. Yeah, that, that that cable is slightly shorter than it should be because I had to retrim it. There we go. Doo -doo -doo. Even at seventy dollars, it's cheaper than the TS one hundred. Ah, uh, yeah, the TS one hundred can often be found cheap, but it works. The other thing as well you've got to remember is the TS one hundred usually appears with an included charger, an included power adapter. And the pine saw does not come with a power adapter. You need to bring your own power supply for the pine saw. Uh, don't forget to screw the extra board into the top housing. Oh, that might have been what those screws were for. What extra board? Um, screw what where? Are you committed to this? I don't think. I think. I think it stays in through interference. I. I think these two screws were holding in the side button board. Ah. I think that's what they were. That's why I didn't remove them. Yeah. Did. Yeah, that's right. I took them out. That's where they came from. Uh, who said that? Yeah, good shout, John. Good shout. It's almost as long as your pizza. Oh, no, Sai. <laughs> Have you got a refund confirmed for that? Yeah. You know, the pizza that never actually arrived. Yeah. Also, have you organised something else to eat tonight? <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, this is right. Okay. I would recommend un unplugging that from the, from the mouse. Do you want me to do this bit? I'm... Do you want to tag out? Hold on. Okay. How? How? The... All the way to the bottom. Oh, oh, wait, hold on. Yeah. Oh, right, those screw holes. Yeah. I was looking at that going, I don't understand. Yeah. We probably would have survived without those screws, but then yeah. on the other hand, it might slip loose at some point, and that'll be really annoying. It was Hi. a virtual pizza. <laughs> 
That is not right. <laughs> Apparently you don't have drafters hands, Caradog. That is right. No. Uh, I have I have soft desk working. <laughs> Strong fingers, though, for your uh, Cherry MX clear switches. <laughs> yes. Are you two still going? Yeah, we are. We're nearly done, though. We're nearly done. Ah! We're, we're basically finished. We're literally just putting the cover on the mouse. The mouse works. We've already confirmed it works. We're basically putting this back together so we can be like, bam, it's done. That's it. That's the end of the stream. Uh, do I have a VR headset? I don't. I, I'd like a VR headset. I just don't want to... I don't want one badly enough to pay for one. And also, the one that I kind of wanted was going to be like an Oculus t an Oculus Quest 2. Um, but I'm getting increasingly nopish about Facebook's bullshittery with the Oculus. Um, so I'm just like, I think I'm going to carry on waiting it out. Because also, like, I want a VR headset, but there's nothing that I do that would... Well, I could find stuff to do with VR. If I had it, I would use it. So, yeah, it's a tough one. <laughs> Are you using these tweezers and going, wow, these things make things so much easier? Shut up. <laughs> uh, a Vive makes for a really good starter headset for cheap. Uh, well, like an old Vive. I suppose you could probably buy them second hand. Yeah. You've got a Quest 2 and you can't be asked with the Facebook crap. You just disable everything you can. Is it possible to disable it, though? That's the question. Can you actually use a Quest 2 without Facebook? Can that actually be done? No. You, well, yeah. you have to have a Facebook sign, account sign in. Yeah. And the thing I still think that's really dumb is if your Facebook account gets banned, which they do for random arbitrary reasons, you lose your you your lose quest your games. gets bricked. Your quest gets bricked. Oh man! At least that was certainly what was happening near yeah. day of release, and it was just like that's that's poorly handled. Yeah, you I mean, got like double sided tape or something. Um, because these skates are well, fifteen years old. Yeah, you know it's really annoying because if you bought this to me. If you brought this to me like a, a couple of weeks beforehand, I would have yeah. been able to get some really shiny new skates from Pure Track. Because I've got new skates for my mouse from Pure Track, who've sent me some stuff for review. Um, however, I don't have the right skates for your mouse, which is, um, which is really annoying. Um, where's the yeah. super glue gone? Uh, the super glue. We'll, we'll dab the super glue in that corner and that corner. Yeah, that would probably just... work. That's going to be really hard to make it stay down, though. I tell you what, let's try. It's not going to be very flat, but let's try um, some of this. These are spare. These are spare adhesive strips for IMAX, and these are quite thin. And we can just cut these to length. Sure. Um. So we trim. No, I. I mean. Obviously, the super glue method is functional because all it needs to do is hold down the corners. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Super glue it is then. Obviously, it will go flat because you're squidging it. Yeah. Hmm. Heat them up. Maybe. Are they too far there gone? There is no stick on them at all. Yeah, the stick is gone. This mouse is ancient. And also the skates have been off and on like yeah. five or six times. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to... They are well baked. Yeah. Well used. It's, well, a, it's an office mouse now, so it doesn't particularly matter for gaming. For yeah. Players. It just needs to stay. I would, um, to be honest, on the assumption that this thing continues to function well now after this test, I would probably say it's worth buying some new skates for it. And like, we can clean up this super glue afterwards. It's a bit messy now, um, but yeah, that we could clean that up and put some new skates on it. IPA clean, new double-sided tape. Yeah, that would probably be. Well, that's the thing. If we're going to go to 
I, new skates would be the answer, but that'll clean up anyway. That's not super good about nail to my skate. <laughs> yeah, that'll happen. That doesn't look too bad, actually. That's a, that came out better than I expected it to. The tiniest dab. Ooh, that's a bit big. You can replace mouse skates with PTFE coated glass adhesive. Yeah. Yeah. You'd have to cut them to size, which you absolutely could do, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. Just a bit of hassle. But yeah, that I would agree with that. Um, let me see. Do you deal with Chromebooks a lot in your shop? Not very often. Um, they're very rarely worth fixing when they come in. I've done a couple of fit repairs on them for um, uh, touching up DC jacks and stuff like that. Um, Software-wise, a lot of the time, if anything goes wrong with them, you just do a factory reset. Because obviously you don't store anything on a Chromebook. So, uh, let's see. Not bad. They stayed on. Nice. Put your weights in. Get it the right weight. Locked and loaded. There you go. Nice. I suppose we should test it one more time. Oh, Otherwise, oh, someone oh, is going to be like, you didn't test it. We'll actually see if it survives the reassembly process. Put those to one side. Okay, plug her in. Mm -mm -mm. How do I feel about Razer products? Eh, um, they seem okay. Yeah. They seem massively overpriced. Yeah, I think they're a bit expensive for what they are personally. And also the fact like you have to make an account to use their stuff. Oh really? Like, the software requires you to sign into an account to use uh, it. I like I knew it would have its own software, so it was a case of you kinda have to be on the Razor ecosystem. It works, yay. Um however if you have to make an account to use it, that's a bit sucky. But yeah. Hmm. Your old laptop powers off every thirty minutes. It's not Windows or overheating related. Hmm. I'd be checking the power supply, try a different charger in case the charger is giving up and the battery is flat. Still can't understand how I managed to pull out the cable. Yeah, I the cable the cable broke at this point. That's where it fatigued, because there's no strain relief here. So the cable fatigued at that point and there was a tail left inside the mouse, but I have lost that tail. That's what actually happened there. It didn't actually fatigue and break at the point where we fixed it. Um, but yeah, that's good to see the um, DPI is working as well. Good. We are WinRAR. I also just like the fact though, that the DPI in the mouse is set up all about the software. Yeah, that's Between nice. the three defaults. I mean, you can do that on my G604, my modern one. Mm. Um, but on the other hand, this is nice that it's got the plus and minus. My one, it's just got a single button, so you have to cycle through it. And like having the LED there is nice. With my one, I kind of have to... I have to go through the DPI settings and go, okay, there's the super slow one. So now I know I'm on number one and then go two, three. There we go. That's the preset that I like. And you have to count through settings. Whereas with that one, you've just got a visual indicator. So it's a, it's a nice touch. Yes. Yeah, I still love the shape of this mouse. Oh, that's so familiar. I love the shape of this mouse. It's really comfortable. Nice. Right, I think we're done. I think we're going to close up. I haven't had a mouse die on me since my Microsoft Intelli mouse from about 1997. Mm. Yeah, mice, mice tend to mechanically break before they electronically break, yeah. So, yeah. Um, although that much being said, I mean, I've had to replace switches before. Like, I replaced the switches in my old Marathon mouse. Mm. Um, and um, Kimbo... Kimbo's my mouse, I have replaced the switches in as well. So having to replace the, the, the button switches is not uncommon. Um, but that's also very easy to do on most mice. So again, you know, if you've got 
Um, that's something that, uh, you know, I, I feel like a lot of people probably throw out perfectly good gaming mice where the switches are worn out. Um, like, and that's the thing, like, you say sort of, oh, it's not worth repairing, but when a gaming mouse can cost upwards of £100 plus, some of them do, you know, paying someone 40 quid to stick some new switches in is actually not bonkers, you know. So, yeah. yeah. What about the wheel test? I'm going. I'm just, I'm just going to assume that it works. We win. We win. I'm sure it's fine. <laughs> I also need the loo, so we're definitely going. All right. Um, anyway, we are leaving. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Let's switch back to that scene. There we go. Bye. Excellent. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. Thanks for sticking with us. We went on far too heckin' long. Uh, Bill, thanks for your input. You did. You were right all along. So uh, credit where it's due. Uh, as I say, you have earned a I told you so card. Use it wisely. <laughs> and everyone else for tuning in. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks for the super chats. Um, thanks for everything else. Absolutely. Yeah. And to iterate the point that oh. we intended to iterate at the beginning. Damn it. But yeah. someone didn't go over it. You should have interrupted me. So you forgot as well. No, no. I was waiting for a moment to butt in, but it never came. I, I didn't stop talking for a moment to let you get a word in edgeways. <laughs> uh, yes, the thing, as, as we were saying, because this is more of a pre preparatory thing than an mm. actual message at this point, because we intended to do it at the beginning. But it's a case of for the people who somehow are here three hours later after complaining about not liking the VODs, yeah. <laughs> don't like and comment on the videos that you do want to see. Because then that way, you'll get recommended the videos that you do want to see, and not the stuff you don't want to see. Yeah. You're going to hear me saying the whole, like, I'm not doing the whole like, comment, subscribe thing at face value. However, one thing, but what, what I'm going to be doing is in the, in the videos, I'm going to be reminding people to, that if you watch one of the videos and you like it, then comment on that video or hit the like button on that video, because then the YouTube algorithm will push more of that kind of video. So for anyone, like, again, it's a bit late. We needed to do this at the beginning of the stream, not the end of it. But for anyone who's who's watching at the moment, who's just like, oh, you only ever do the talk show. You never do normal videos. Comment on the normal videos and YouTube will give you more of the normal videos. Whereas if you comment on the live shows, YouTube will give you more of the live shows. That's how it works, people. Um, so, yeah, um, that's something that we're, I'm going to be iterating that in quite a few of the next upcoming videos to, again, try and steer people toward the content that they want to see. Absolutely. Or failing that, you can play the IQ200 game and use the subscriptions page, not the YouTube homepage. I've been hearing rumblings from a few people that the subscription page for them doesn't show videos they don't like, uh, does, doesn't show certain videos until mm. much until much later. I've always heard rumblings of that, and I've heard rumblings of YouTube fiddling with the subscriptions page, but I've yeah. never seen evidence of it. Yeah, no, neither have I, but it's just a case of I've heard yeah. people mention it. So it's a case of mentioning again, just in case someone's like, oh, yes, that happened to me for some reason. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Oh, well. Yep. Oh, well, in any case, we are out of here. I'm going to go get some food. Absolutely. Yep. Good evening. Farewell. Au revoir. I've enjoyed this conversation in English. <laughs> uh, oh, uh, where do I want? YouTube, live streaming. We're going. Thank you, everyone. Goodbye. Ciao. And stream. Au revoir. And farewell. Goodbye.